It's the third year of the most prestigious coonhound event in the world, the United Kennel Club's Tournament of Champions right here in Greencastle, Indiana. And tonight we're about to present Midnight Mayhem, part of the 2023 TOC event where we introduce you to the final 24 dogs. So sit back and enjoy. You've waited all year, and now it's time. The largest event purse in United Kennel Club history. The field is whittled down from over 1,300 qualifiers. 96 of the best advance to the finals and take their shot at the $250,000 total purse. It's the United Kennel Club's Tournament of Champions. Who will go home with $50,000? Let's make history. It's time. Are you ready? Welcome to the 2023 United Kennel Club Tournament of Champions Midnight Mayhem Show. Tonight, we're here in Greencastle, Indiana at Three Fat Labs, our beautiful venue here, and we're about to introduce you to the final 24 dogs that are gonna to advance to round two. I'm your host, J. Paul Jackson, and here beside me tonight, I also have our expert commentator, Steve Burkholder. Steve, good to see you tonight, man. How you doing? Well, it's good to be here for another year. Um, you know, you just don't think that the menu can get any better, but it just seems like every year it's just more exciting to come here. So super excited to be here uh, yes, tonight, for sure. Super glad to be here with you, Steve. I tell you, this is our third year to be here at Three Fat Labs here in Greencastle, Indiana. This is the most prestigious event in the Coonhound world. And tonight we're going to take a look at the first round as these teams come in. We're going to see the winner of all 24 cast. And to interview these guys, we've got Rick Stretch standing outside. Rick's going to tell us a lot about these dogs, give us some insight uh, into how they did tonight, get to talk to the handlers, and show us who's going to advance. While he's doing that, we've got Steve here beside me, who's going to fill us in later on on how these dogs arrived here at the Tournament of Champions and what it takes to get here. So we've got a whole lot of action. We're going to be coming to you live for the next couple of hours tonight. Hopefully we'll wrap this thing up before two or three in the morning, but who knows? These guys are out in an area that's really, really rich with coons. We've got a bunch of great judges and great guides, and these guys are gonna do everything that they possibly can to make sure that they're able to put these dogs on game so we can give these dogs the best chance in the world to find out who's gonna emerge as our 2023 TOC champion. What do you think about the area that we're at? I mean, this is our third year here, and there's a good reason for that, isn't there, Steve? Well, it is. And, you know, Greencastle, Indiana, it's, it's always been, it's, it's rich in the hound industry as far as hosting big events. Um, you know, there's been world champion, uh, there's been world champions crowned here. Uh, obviously, the first year of the TOC was brought here uh, at this great venue, and uh, it's just built from there. You know, it's, it's the third year, it's the third year of it now, and uh, it's just, it's an incredible event. And a lot of that has to do with the territory that we have that uh, that we can hunt in. You know, there's it's it's good for dogs that like that like to score. You got to have game that you can score on. And uh, you know, uh, judging from the last two years, uh, I don't expect anything different. You know, the weather is just absolutely perfect this weekend. Uh, you know, we're supposed to be in the you know mid 50s, and uh, for that time of the year, for this time of the year, uh, it should produce some really. It should give dogs. Uh, all dogs an equal opportunity to win. Yeah. You know, and, and this territory brings us too. absolutely. As you said, the weather is absolutely beautiful here tonight. It's a great night to be out in the woods. These guys, they went out right at sundown tonight. So we're going to receive these casts as they come in. As I said earlier, Rick is going to give us some commentary, get to interview the the handlers and the owners as they come back. 
and give us a little bit of insight into how they did tonight. But before we go to Rick, as we're waiting for our first cast to come in, Steve, we, we came here with 96 dogs. Break it down for us how they got here. Absolutely. So uh, the, the, the way the qualification works is uh, you have all of, the, of 2022 uh, to uh, get qualified. And what it requires to get qualified is you got to get five cast wins. Uh, it can be at a local event, national event. Um, it could even be at an event like the TOC last year. Uh, you know, you gain cast wins and five cast wins gets you qualified to come to this event. And uh, once you get them five cast wins, you're now you're now uh, qualified to hunt in the tournament of champions the following spring. So, so you say it takes five cast wins to get here. But tell us what a cast win is. How do you achieve a cast win? Okay, so there's several ways you can do it, but the, probably the most common way is uh, there's a lot of local clubs, what we call local clubs in the area, and you go there to that local club and you compete in that club and you, you draw out in cast. Usually that's a four dog cast, and you have to go out and you have to beat the three dogs that you've drawn out against and come in with plus points. And when you do that, you take and uh, you get a cast win, and you have to do that five times throughout, the, throughout that year. Yeah, and you can see there in our graphic, you know, after, after that, we come in with our, our 24 cast four dogs tonight here in round one on Thursday, which is where we're at. And these guys are going to move on through the weekend. Yeah, and you know, something that's really pretty awesome about this year is uh, we had a record number of dogs get qualified. We actually had uh, 1,333 dogs that got qualified uh, uh, for this year, for this calendar year to compete in it. Out of that 1,333, 804 dogs actually went and competed in six different zones. And in them six zones, the zones was in, in uh, one was in Missouri, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, Arkansas, and Georgia. And out of them, out of them zones, depending on the number of entries that was there, it was right, uh, you know, the bigger the zone, the more they sent. But, you know, the way it worked out this year is they sent 18 from uh, La Plata, Missouri, 15 come from LaGrange, Indiana, 21 come from Mount Gilead, Ohio, 14 come from uh, Conway, Arkansas, uh, 16 from Kentucky, and then 12 from the Georgia zone. And out of them, so 96 advanced out of that, them zones. So, so we brought the top 96 here, and then we actually had, on the top 96, we actually had uh, 93 that actually confirmed their entries here today. There was actually two females uh, that come into season, so they couldn't, they obviously had to be uh, pulled out. And then there was a, an entry from, I believe it was the uh, Missouri zone that couldn't make it here for whatever reason. So we have 93 of the best in the country that are going to not only compete for the TOC title, uh, but for the obviously prize money that's at stake as well. So uh, that's what got us to here. And then we're going to go throughout the weekend. And, uh, you know, they went out like you had shared, uh, started out with 24 casts tonight. And uh, there's going to be 24 cast winner. Now, something that's unique about this event, um, uh, because it's kind of a special event, is uh, there will be 24 cast winners. Now, starting tonight, uh, they don't have to be plus point cast winners. Uh, so in other words, uh, what that means is it's a full, fully elimination style event. And so there's a, a few. So, so let, me, let me break in here for a second. So when you talk about plus point cast winners, you know, in this event, Starting tonight, do you have to have positive points to advance? No, you can have you can win your cast with what we call circle points or or least amount of minus, however the tiebreaker works down from that point. But since it's a fully elimination style of event, you can you are going to there's going to be a cast winner uh, in every cast that's going to advance. There'll be 24 dogs that advance to that advance to tomorrow night, and it's something a little so bit different uh, because it's a fully elimination style of event. However, you say that there are going to be 24 dogs that are going to advance tonight. What if we have a cast that gets disqualified for whatever reason? Is that There's, possible? It, it's, it's very possible, but it's, it's, very, it, it's very rare. Uh, it, it, would, it would have to come down to where a cast would get, you know, scratched for, uh, you know, a, 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 an incident, you know, because even if, even if they get scratched for not being able to get back on the hour and, and, and we're going to actually go through some of them rules uh, later on in the period, uh, whoever's leading the cast at that point 
would it, it then it would advance. So, so there's a few ways they couldn't, but it's very rare in that occasion. It could happen, but very rare. Yeah, I, I do believe, I recall having one cast at, at some point in the last couple of years as we've been bringing this to you guys that did all the dogs treat on off game. I believe it was a possum that night, but that's the only time that I think in three years we've seen that happen. Exactly, so, and, that, and that could happen in this incident. Yeah, more than likely we're gonna get to see 24 dogs advance tonight. Yes. And that's the goal, we wanna see these dogs you know, the, every the, the idea every is is advances. is beat the uh, beat the competition that you draw against in advance. Yep. You know that's the, that's the idea of, of the format. So basically, what you're telling me is that starting night, this is just a game of survival. You got to survive your cast, come out as a cast winner. Oh yeah, and you know the uh, uh, score doesn't really matter or anything like that. I mean, right now what it, it's down to is is what you want to focus on is you have to you have to beat the three dogs uh, that you draw out against you know, in that two hour uh, time period to advance to the next round. So, uh, and you said three dogs. We know that because of scratches, we do have a couple of casts that only have three dogs in the cast, so they exactly. only have to beat two. But right, by and large, I mean, we're looking at 24 casts. I believe 21 of them are four dog casts. Exactly, and so how that, wor how that works is it's, it's totally a random draw. So when a handler comes in to draw his cast, uh, he simply reaches in and draws a, a, a cast number. And, uh, and, and so that, you know, so there's going, there was actually three casts tonight that did what we call the lucky three dog cast. Because at this level, guys, the competition is stiff. Always and, easier to be two it, than to be it, three. It, it is. And, you know, you, you, always, you always wanted to draw that three dog. I know for me, you know, that it was always a, as a competitor. Uh, but that can, also, that can also work against you because uh, I've had it in a three dog cast where it tends to be more of a shootout. And, uh, you know, so that can, that can work against you. But either way, I, you know, the guys that got to this level, uh, I can, you know, I can, you know, attest that uh, it, it, their mindset is, is it doesn't matter if I draw a three dog cast or a four dog cast. Uh, they didn't get here by accident or anything like that. They worked hard, they had to achieve the five cast wins, and then obviously advance out of their zones. And the zones was tough this year. You know, there's a lot of good dogs that went home this year uh, that aren't here, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, and, and so you, you mentioned the zones earlier. I want to come back to that a little bit also. You know, we've got a number of dogs that are going to, all of these dogs, the 96 that made it here are qualified. Of course, we've only got 93 tonight. They all advance through the zone. But do you have to win your zone to make it here? No. So what they do, so what they do on the zone level, um, and that's predetermined, and it's all about, it's all based on a percentage. So we have 804 dogs. We have 804 dogs that actually hunted at the zones this year in six different zones. And, uh, you know, Ohio, Mount Gilead, Ohio, had the biggest zone. In other words, they had the most dogs that got entered there. So they ended up, there was 21 dogs that advanced out of that zone. So that was, that was the most that uh, advanced out of that zone. Uh, because they had the most number of dogs there. And then obviously you take like Comer, Georgia, uh, they had 12 that advanced out of the Comer, Georgia zone because they obviously had uh, less, less dogs that hunted that. So it's based off of a percentage, uh, you know, how the 96 figures into the 804. Gotcha. Yeah, thank you for that great explanation of how we got here along that. So the competition is tough. You have to advance through the cast to get here. You don't necessarily have to win your zone. To recap, we're coming in tonight with the top 24 dogs, but later on, it'll be where you cannot, you have to have positive points to move on. But in this first round, it's not no, that it's, way. No, it's this way through the whole, it's, it's going to be uh, an, an elimination style of event. Um, it's win your cast and advance all the way through. Has it been that way the last two years? Uh, no, it's, it's something that it's something that it's, it's something new that they have come up with, you know. And one thing that uh, that I've always, you know, one thing that um, uh, United Kennel Club and a lot of their staff they've done a great job with is continuously trying to improve, you know, what the hunters want. I guess is what you could say, you know, what the competitors want. And this was kind of a this was kind of a thing that uh, you know. It widely, uh, including myself, uh, that I've been a big proponent of because it takes all the, you know, sometimes you can get into an area of hunting and maybe game's just not moving. Sure. And, and you've worked so extremely hard to get here or maybe the game's not cooperating. I mean, we, we've talked about den trees. You know, you can, you know, you can uh, tree one in a den tree and you can't, simply cannot see it or can't find it. Dog done exactly what he's supposed to. Yeah. And, 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 so, and that 
a particular situation, it would, it would keep that dog from advancing that probably should have advanced. So this kind of takes care, this kind of takes care of all that. So it was something new they come up with uh, this year. We've heard a lot of positive response on it. I'm excited for the harness. Talking to the guys today, uh, I didn't hear, of the, of the 93 that was competing here today, I didn't hear one guy say, oh, man, I wish they didn't do that. So I think, uh, I think it was a really smart move and uh, kudos to their part because it was very well received. And I know for me as a competitor, that's what I would have wanted. So, you know, it's a, it, it makes it, it just makes it a little bit more uh, where you're going to, it's all about, we want the best dog to advance. We want the best dog to win. So know? basically what we're, we're talking about here is just another example of the organizers here at the United Kennel Club making a change to make it even level the player field further and to be all about the dog, to not penalize the dog that gets in an area where there's not any game, where it's not possible for them to get a positive score, but to allow them the benefit of the doubt so they're able to advance on. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, uh, to, you know, like to your point on, and it kind of goes back to the zone level too, you know, the zone level plays a little bit more off the score, okay? But the, the beauty of the zone, um, you don't, Last place at the zone, at that particular zone, is as good as first place at that particular zone because you're going to the finals. Yeah. And that's the ultimate goal. And I always said it didn't matter if you placed last, if you placed first. The, it, what mattered is, is I was there. You know, I got a chance to go compete at the finals, you know. And, you know, before the TOC come, you know, the, that's how the world hunt, you know, the world hunt, the UKC world hunt was broke down in the zones. And so... That was always the th mindset is if they was sending 20, if I placed 20th, that was as good as first. Amen. You know, yeah. you got to be there at the game and show up for the game in order to play and you got to play in order to win. So basically that's what it's about at the zone level, getting there, <coughs> surviving through that zone to make it here and get the opportunity to play for that coveted title of tournament of champion champion and you know tonight's going to be our first step in that journey here in Greencastle Indiana as I said earlier we've got our top 24 dogs or our, our 24 cast I'm sorry 93 dogs out in the field we're going to go to Rick Stretch here in just a few minutes and Rick's going to give us some insight as the teams come in he's going to interview the cast winner hopefully from all 24 cast tonight and uh, we're going to look forward to that and I'm really glad to have you here also giving us some expert insight into how if this thing went down. We're going to get to see the scorecards here in just a little bit as they come back to Three Fat Labs. And speaking of Three Fat Labs, this place has been a wonderful place for us to have host the event. Third year in a row to be here at Three Fat Labs. Uh, every year we've had a wonderful dinner. The catering has been absolutely fabulous. Earlier today, everybody gathered here. You've, we've got uh, the Walk of Champions out front, as you can see in our graphic there. These guys, they showed up and came in. Let's take a look. Yeah, I think one of the greatest things for these guys that I hear from these handlers is just the honor of getting to make it here. To make that walk down the sidewalk, as we saw those guys earlier, you can see the venue, beautiful. The mill was great. Uh, we had our cast call out on the back porch. And as I said, it was a beautiful day here as evidenced uh, by the bright sun, sunshine and shirt sleeves out there. Alan Gingrich, who uh, does the cast call every year, something that everybody's waiting for and looking forward to. You've been here before. What kind of excitement is, how do you feel standing out there on that patio to hear your name in that cast call? Well, it, it's something that you just, uh, you know, driving up from Florida, the last couple of days, it's just, it's something, it's just that aura in the air, you yeah. know. It's just standing out there and watching them guys come up, a lot of them their first time, and and hearing them say, "I can't believe I haven't experienced this before," you know. It's just it's something that's unique. It's just it's something that's really special here. How many times have you been here? Well, I competed the first year. And then obviously um, analyzed last year and this, this yep. year. Yep, you were here with me last year at the table. And, uh, you know, it's, it's as close to the world hunt as winning a world hunt probably. Um, as, but it's different. It's different in the fact that you get five cast wins to get here. Um, so 
it gives everybody a chance to compete, to come and compete for a title of a tournament of champions. So once you come, you want to come back. That's what we hear from all the hunters. You know, and the thing is, you got to get here, as I said earlier, to, to play. You know, if you don't play, you can't win. And that's what these guys are really, really looking forward to. Um, you know, before these teams start to come in tonight, too, we're going to have our final 24. I want to remind everybody that, that our live stream coverage is going to continue uh, throughout the weekend, culminating, obviously, tonight we're coming to you with Midnight Mayhem, but we're also going to be coming back on Saturday night at 8.30 Eastern Time where we're going to start out, and we're going to go throughout the night as long as it takes and, until we get the winner. Um, speaking of getting a winner, we also this year had an online pick em, which was pretty doggone interesting. We had our folks were able to go online. Obviously, <coughs> that's closed, but we had a pick em. We're going to see how well that our audience did. But before we do that, um, actually, let's take a look at the graphic of the pick em. So, as you can see uh, in the pick em, looks like Dominator. Didn't quite dominate, but definitely came out on top. Of course, Thunderbirds Dominator is a name that we're very familiar with here uh, at these major UKC events. Uh, squeaked out first place there over Lady with 35.88% of the vote. Lady with 34.72. Scar with 29.63. Sundown, another name that we're familiar with. Uh, seen quite a bit at these major events with 24.31 and rounding out our top five Indiana Outlaw, which I think is a pretty cool play on Indian Outlaw with 22.45. Does that top five surprise you at all? Uh, not at all. I mean, these dogs are all winners. You know, um, you can't, uh, you know, the Indiana Outlaw uh, dog uh, was the top three finalist of a, a world hunt a few years ago. Dominator obviously uh, placed third here last year. The lady female, as hot, as hot as any dog in the country. Uh, I mean, I'm thinking in the last eight, nine months, her, her total earnings is somewhere around $100,000. Um, so she's on a, a heck of a roll. Obviously, the Scar Dog is off of Willie. Um, you know, he's hot right now. Um, Apollo, what can you say? That dog has been as consistent as any of them. And, you know, if you go on down through the list in the, in the 6 through 10 there, I mean, any of them dogs, it's unfortunate. I do want to touch on this uh, for all the guys on the pick'em. Um, the Kickstart My Heart female actually come in season, and she was one of the females that couldn't make it here this weekend. So she was a fan favorite. She was on a roll. Obviously, she couldn't come compete here. Um, you take Hobo, uh, Jeff Strickland, or uh, Jeff Strickland. Jeff, um, Jeff is hunting for John Strickland. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he, I mean, he could, he could very easily uh, win this thing. He's, his dog is capable of it. Uh, the Wipeout 3 zone dog is obviously a good one. The Heartland Bonnie female, she was a top six here last year. So these are all very good picks. I mean, I, you know, we, we all have our fan favorites. I can tell you in my top five, uh, you know, Dominator and Lady both are in my top five, you know, pick -ems. Um I'm a little bit more of a... I go a little bit outside the box. I think, uh, I think a dark horse could very easily win this thing. Um, I think uh, for me on the, on the Pickums, uh, I've, got, uh, I've got a dog. There's a dog that's competing tonight called Two Track, uh, owned by Leland Miller. I think he's a dark horse. I think he's, gonna, he's one of my top five Pickums. And, uh, and then there's a, a dog that goes by the nickname of Tonk. Um, uh, he's, a, he's one that I've got picked. So... You know, it, uh, it's really exciting. There's actually, the Pickums is always fun because it's bragging rights. We do it every year. Uh, we've obviously sat down, me and uh, you have J. Paul and, and also have with Rick Stretch. Uh, I forced Rick to, uh, we have it in this book as it recorded just so Rick can't get out of it. You can see it right here. I made him pick his, his 24 cast winners and, and I picked mine. And I think J. Paul uh, picked his as well. So we're going to see how we fare. Uh, as the night rolls on because it is bragging rights. And I think that's why the Pickums is so fun. Uh, and I think, uh, according to, I think, the statistics we got, I think we had a record number of people uh, participating in the Pickums. So kudos to all you guys out there that are tuned in this uh, weekend. Uh, obviously, I think we even had more than we did at the World, which is really pretty awesome. 
And, uh, you know, uh, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting to have you guys tune in and, and watch your guys' favorites to see how far they advance and uh, who's going to win it because uh, it's bragging rights to the next event. You know, it's bragging rights to the fall event. So, cool. absolutely. And we're fixing to go break here in just a second. But before we do, uh, I want to tell you guys that when we come back, we're going to, you know, we, we got to see the stats on the pick from the online pick uh, As Steve said, we had a little fun this afternoon going through our picks, too. We're going to take a look as we're waiting on these top 24 to come in at who you guys picked. Of course, I'm the novice here, so uh, I probably won't fare nearly as well. But I can't wait to, to hear who you and Rick picked after seeing the public favorite. Also, we've got some other cool things that we're going to talk about when we come back here in just a second. So stick with us. We're going to be back with our pick them here in just a second at the 2023 United Kennel Club's Tournament of Champions. The United Kennel Club's Tournament of Champions has been brought to you by our official performance dog nutrition partner, Yukonuba. Fuel up, train hard, get after it. And by our official GPS collar partner, Dogtra. Make every dog exceptional. Ready to do whatever it takes. Athletes that pound for pound can outrun, outwork, and outperform anybody you're watching on Sunday. No contract required. You don't waste that kind of potential. You train it, fuel it, unleash it. You activate the power that sits ready and waiting inside every fiber of muscle. You fill every last cell with the energy to push harder than whatever gets in the way. You turn drive into overdrive, natural ability into legendary status. And to do it, you need nutrition that holds nothing back. The Yukonuba Premium Performance Lineup. Built to run full throttle on protein and fat, then find another gear. Made with nutrients that are customized for what your dog does. GI technology that supports optimal nutrient delivery and an antioxidant cocktail that helps day three feel like day one. Where your dog peaks depends on how far their fuel can take them. The Yukonuba Premium Performance Lineup. Four formulas to hold nothing back. UKC celebrates 125 years in 2023. For a limited time, honor the history and legacy of your dog's line with the all-new three-generation Heritage Display Pedigree. The Heritage Display Pedigree pays homage to UKC pedigrees of old with elegant modern touches. These pedigrees are meant to be framed, cherished, and passed down from generation to generation. Whether you have a highly recognized dog or simply want to pay tribute to that special dog from years ago, the Heritage Display Pedigree helps celebrate and recognize those who left their mark. My hope is that my kids and future grandkids have this pedigree tucked away somewhere long after I'm gone. Get your Heritage Display Pedigree at shop.ukcdogs.com. Established in 1978, the UKC Coonhound World Championship is one of the most sought after titles for Coonhounds. Qualifying for the 46th running of the 2023 World Hunt will conclude at the end of August. Qualified Hounds will compete in regionals September 15th and 16th and 108 will advance to the finals. If you qualify, join us for the finals in Mount Gilead, Ohio on September 21 through the 23rd. For more information, visit ukcdogs.com.
the United Kennel Club's Tournament of Champions is brought to you by our official performance dog nutrition partner, Yukonuba. Fuel up, train hard, get after it. And by our official GPS collar partner, Dogtra. Make every dog exceptional. They're partners, ready to do whatever it takes. Athletes that pound for pound can outrun, outwork, and outperform anybody you're watching on Sunday. No contract required. You don't waste that kind of potential. You train it, fuel it, unleash it. You feed nutrition that holds nothing back. The Yukonuba Premium Performance Lineup. Did you know that your monthly subscription to Coonhound Bloodlines comes packed with upcoming UKC event information, official UKC event results, and articles of interest about coon hunting? It sure does. Read about the top competition hunters and hounds, as well as stories about pleasure hunting and bench show hounds. Subscribe today or renew online at shop.ukcdogs.com. Check out the United Kennel Club online store for all of our magazine subscriptions and UKC merchandise. Go to shop.ukcdogs.com and you'll find all the best gear to support your UKC lifestyle. Snag a new hat, hoodie, or t-shirt and subscribe to our many publications, including our world-leading coonhound publication, Coonhound Bloodlines. We even have research pedigrees and rule books available to purchase. Why wait? Shop now. Welcome back to the United Kennel Club 2023 Tournament of Champions. We're here at Three Fat Labs in Greencastle, Indiana. I'm your host, J. Paul Jackson. I've got our expert commentators, Steve Burkholder and Rick Stretch. Of course, Steve's here with me at the desk, and we're about to hear from Rick. I believe some of our cast winners have come back in, so we're going to introduce you to the first teams that have qualified for the Final 24. Before we do that, though, I want to remind everybody that we will be back here at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturday night for our finals. We're going to take you through until the very end. Also Saturday night, we're going to have a couple of really interesting guests. I'm going to be joined uh, by Lynn Carradine from Yukonuba, one of our sponsors. Always a pleasure to have Lynn on the set and hear her insight into canine nutrition. And also this year, we have a new segment called Coon Hounds 101 with Jamie Eastep. And for guys like me that are totally novices, I'm really looking forward to that because that is going to be a great segment. We're not only going to bring it to you, hear from the TOC, but we're also going to continue through our platforms, YouTube, and on our social channels, of course. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, there you can see, follow us at UKC Hunting Ops. 
on both Facebook and Instagram. And also be sure to use our hashtag, hashtag dogs that do more. And of course, we're also available on YouTube at youtube.com slash UKC dogs. So please follow us. We're gonna continue to live stream, but now we're back here for Midnight Mayhem. We're about to introduce you to the first dog that's come in and made it to the final 24. So let's send it over to our colleague, Rick Stretch. Rick, tell us about the lucky cast winner from cast one. Welcome back here, and uh, we're down here where the action is tonight, and I'm happy to announce that we got our first cast winner in, and he's a familiar face here from the last uh, two or three big hunts that we've had here at UKC, Wyatt Monin and his hound Hawk. Wyatt and Hawk made the final four of the world hunt last year, as you well know, and uh, we're going to ask Wyatt here a few things, what happened here tonight, and how things have been going with him and Hawk. So Wyatt, tell us a little bit about your hunt this evening. Um, we had a good cast, good judge, uh, good guide, everything else. I, it was just pretty cut and dry. I treat a coon a couple hundred yards out of the truck, and uh, the other dogs took some minus. One of them withdrew, and I had a three-dog cast. That's probably noteworthy. And uh, I was treed through the country there in about eight tenths or so, and get in there. He had a coon. We go back to score the other dog. I kept my option to keep him on the leash, and he, uh, he withdrew also, so... So by the true uh, virtue of elimination style event tonight, you didn't have to hunt the full two hours? Nope, by uh, 100, maybe an hour, 15, 20 minutes okay. or so. All so. right. You like that format? I do. It's what I'm a little more familiar with, so yeah, I, I like it. Okay. Figure out, right. no use running the dog down when you're the last one standing, so. Yeah. So you and Hawk made the final four of the world hunt last fall. Yep. What has been going on since that time with you and Hawk? Oh, since that time, I've got some one-year-olds off of him that I've been messing with that I'm, I'm liking quite a bit. Um, they're showing a lot of potential. We've had a pretty rough winter, though, so you know, I haven't got to put him in as much as I'd like to, but he's, he's won a little around 21,000 in PKC since, uh, since that. Um, 21,000 since the world hunt? Since the world, wow. yeah. Good. He's been doing good. We got the been doing been doing the pu uh, messing with the pups a little bit more though. Um, I've still been hunting hawk whenever I can, but you know our winter was pretty rough, so it was pretty sure. tough to get out a lot. Sure. So, so you're a thirty five hundred dollar winner tonight after winning this round. Is that going to be enough for you, or are you wanting to move on? I'm hoping to keep it rolling, but we'll <laughs> we'll have to see. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations to you, man. I know appreciate our hands are full. It. Yep. Uh, appreciate you coming up here, and we'll uh, we'll come back here with another dog here. We got another winner in the waiting line here. Appreciate it. Set this down anyway. Right. We have our first cast winner. And this, by the way, when we go through the number of the cast, I'm not sure exactly what cast that uh, Wyatt and Hawk were in. I, I said our cast one winner, actually the first cast to come back in tonight. Of course, we've got 24 casts, so that's one down, 23 to go. I, I saw you smiling during that. Uh, you know, uh, Hawk, we watched him, you and I and, and Rick last fall at the uh, Worlds there in my hometown of Dyersburg, Tennessee. He had a great run, of course. Finals didn't go exactly the way that he had hoped it would, I'm sure, but not surprised at all to see him back. How about you? I'm not, and I'm, I'm just kicking myself right now. Wyatt, you're going to have to just remind me. i got to sharpen my skills. I didn't pick you uh, in uh, as far as to, to win, and I should have, I guess, because uh, looking at the card, uh, it was a total domination. And, and I know in... in to our point earlier on a three dog cast, looking at the card, uh, when you uh, when you get into a three dog cast like he did tonight, you know sometimes dogs just make mistakes. And what it looks like here, uh, uh, judging by you know hearing what he had shared and looking at the card or whatever, it looks to me like they made a couple of what we call slick trees, empty trees, and uh, you know that can be a very quick uh, elimination style event. You know he trees two coons and they each pull a an empty. And, uh, you know, one has, uh, one has 200, uh, a 200 minus on empty, and another one has two and a quarter. And, and what was know, his winning and, score? And his winning score was 350. You know, he scored, he had 50 and 100 and a quarter on two, uh, on two scorable trees. And, uh, you know, you know in, in a three-dog cast, it can really be over that quick, you know. So uh, you can, it can be over that quick, and you, can, and you can pull yourself back that quick. So... It uh, doesn't surprise me at all uh, with the hawk dog. You heard what he said. The dog's been kind of on a mini roll. But, you know, the other thing is, too, what's pretty awesome is you heard, you know, here's a dog. You know, a hawk, uh, if, you know, he's a six-year-old dog. And, you know, you heard that he shared that, you know, they didn't get to hunt as much as he'd like to. And, uh, you know, we talk about this often, um, dogs that have a little age on them. 
-hmm. They tend to show up when the light shine the brightest because they're seasoned. Now, we've seen young dogs advance and go through and win it. But it's, it's, it's them dogs that are steady, you know, uh, and usually with a little bit of age, you get that. So uh, congratulations, Haw or congratulations uh, Hawk. on getting Hawk through. Uh, Wyatt, I, I'm sure you're going to be a contender for the rest of the weekend. Oh, I'm sure he is, too. And I got to tell you, that, that was one where I differed a little bit from YouTube. But we're going to get to the pickups in a minute. But right now, we don't have time to go to the pickups because I believe we've already had another cast winner come in. So let's take it back to our colleague, Rick Stretch. Rick, uh, tell us about the second cast winner. <clears throat> You have to cue them. All right. Two cast back. <laughs> of course, after Rick talks to us about the cast winner, we're also going to come back to Steve and have Steve break down the scorecard for us. Uh, you know, tonight we're coming to you live, so <clears throat> looks like we got a little bit of a technical difficulty there, but we're going to work it out really, really quickly, and we'll be back to, to, to Rick. Uh, you've got the scorecard there. I don't want you to reveal who the winner is, obviously, yet, although I'm sure there are a lot of people who just recognize both dog and handler. Let's take a look at this next scorecard. How did it look as far as scoring goes? Well, it's, a, it's another, uh, another three-dog cast, um, and uh, it looks to me like, uh, you know, I'd love to hear from the, uh, I'd love to hear from, I would want to hear their take. Uh, it doesn't appear that they had a super good hunt. Um, it looks to me, uh, you know, uh, you know, obviously, what was, the, what was the winning score there? Uh, they actually, uh, the cast that actually was won here was won with minus points. Wow. So, so again, uh, last uh, year and the year before, that would have been an elimination. Exactly. And, and so uh, what basically, ha you know, we're going to obviously get his perspective on it, but basically what happened here is uh, looks to me like a dog minus out and uh, uh, another dog got scratched. And I'm sure the handler will share a little bit on, on what happened on that side of it, you know. And so obviously when that happens, uh, I'm sure there's probably some more hunting time left, but it, it didn't have to hunt it because it obviously was going to advance them from here. And that's what, that's what, the, that's what the, the total elimination style of event hunt uh, was designed for, was for that, them particular incidents. Sure. So, so you have a winner, you know. You know, the thing that I like about the change to the format, and again, you know, you guys are the experts. I'm the novice here. Just happy to be here, as the old saying goes. But the thing that I really like about the total elimination is the fact that, you know, you always have the possibility to n maybe even not have a winner uh, in a scenario where you've got to have a positive score to advance on a really bad night. So I, I think that there are a lot of pros to it. And again, as you were saying earlier this evening, you know, when we talked to the guys that showed up for the cast call and for the dinner this evening, which uh, was everyone, you know, not a single person had anything negative to say about the change in the format. As a matter of fact, everyone that I talked to not only was glad to see it come, they were excited about it. Absolutely. You know, and, we, and I guarantee you that when we get, finally get back to Rick here in a minute and we get to talk about the cast winner, you know, you're going to see that because this is a guy that would be packed up going home right now had we not had the change in the form. Right, and, and we're going to hear from him. I mean, I don't know, you know, it, 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 not looking at just taking it at a glance. Uh, you know, I don't know if, you know, if they, uh, if they hunted the full two hours uh, or not, you know, so, you know, that, that, that remains to be seen. I mean, it's going to be, ex it's going to be uh, excited to hear from them on, uh, you know, on how their cast went. Sure, sure so. it's going to be. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, it looks like you guys came through on your pick them there, too. I will well, you know, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not 100% for sure on, uh, I know I picked uh, that particular dog to advance. I don't know if Rick did or not. I guess that remains to be seen. I, I told him I'm not going to open the book until we get done or whatever because, uh, uh, you no, know. No, that's he, not what you told me. I told you I wasn't going to let you open the book when you get done. <laughs> that might be a better assessment. <laughs> hey, you've got a pin over there in your hand? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, for, for sure. And, uh, you know, Talking to a lot of the guides uh, earlier tonight, you know, a lot of these guys uh, was all going to be hunting, uh, and it doesn't surprise me. And here it is, um, what is it? Uh, twelve fifteen. Twelve fifteen, and we already have two casts back in, and uh, you know that's a that's a, the, the the awesome thing about the Greencastle Club. Doug and the entire crew do a great job on their guide network. 
you know. Um, and a lot of these guys get guided close. You know, I was hearing different guides, and we're going to drive 15 minutes. We're going to drive 20 minutes. We're driving uh, 35 minutes. You know, to put 24 casts in the woods, and probably the, I mean, the farthest maybe somebody was going to drive tonight was an hour. That, that uh, is exceptional. Exactly. And, and to get them in, into decent territory to hunt. And you yeah. brought up a point there that I want you to elaborate a little bit on for the people like me that probably don't know as much about these events. You know, I, I had guys that I worked with that, that I was talking to earlier and telling them what I was going to be doing this weekend. And you know, they were like, wow, you're going to have 100 dogs go into the field broken down into 24 casts. When, I mean, is this public ground? Is this private ground? Where the heck are they all going to go and hunt? Not, you know, and I was trying to explain to them the way that the system works. So for those that are, are out there scratching their heads, like a lot of you know, the guys that I know that aren't real familiar with, with this type of event, how do they come up with enough property, enough territory for 96 dogs to go out in 24 cast? Absolutely. So what they do is, uh, so the local host club uh, is, uh, is, uh, uh, is, is the Greencastle Club here. And they're, they're a club that they've been around for years. And there's many of these clubs throughout the United States of America um, and even in Canada and places. So what they do is uh, the guys, the members of that club uh, actually set out long prior to this hunt, uh, start setting up what, what we call guides, non hunting guides. Uh, everybody that, that uh, every cast here, uh, to keep it fair, uh, it's done, done through a draw system. So when you draw your cast, you know, as a hunter, you get drawn to cast four. As a guide, you are going to draw what cast you're going to guide. So if you get assigned to cast four, you're now going to guide cast four. And the chance are you're not going to have any ties to that cast. So what you've done uh, prior to this is you've set up hunting spots for these dogs to hunt. Now these dogs are all, it's free cast into timber. A lot of the ground in this area is, there may be some public ground, but the bulk of it is actually private ground where these guides have went out and have talked to landowners and farmers and that kind of thing and let them know that we're bringing this hunt into town and ask them if they could guide these four dogs on there to score them on hunting. And so it's all, it's all free casted. Uh, and most of these dogs have never been to the territory that they're going to hunt tonight. And that, I think that's kind of what, um, you know, what's kind of tantalizing uh, or, uh, you know, that's the, you know, that's the aura about coming to a place like this is where it keeps that playing field the way it does is it's totally free casting and, and the guides set that up prior to the hunt. Yeah. So. And I tell you, I really want to give a big thank you, too, because it takes a whole lot of private landowners out there who are willing to allow Absolutely. these groups, to, the, the club, to come onto their land. And without the participation by the private landowners, events like this wouldn't be possible. So, you know, if you're wondering what it takes, you just heard it. It's a whole lot of people working into co in cooperation that make these events happen. And speaking of the event, we've had another cast winner, as we said a minute ago, come back in. So we're going to go once again to Rick Stretch. I'm standing here with our second cast winner of the night. It's Larry Bourbon with Josie Wells. Um, Larry, you're in here a little bit early. I'm assuming you didn't have to hunt the full two hours tonight. No, we did not. Two All dogs right. on our cast ended up getting scratched. So. Okay. All right. How much time did you hunt tonight? We hunted about 55 minutes. Okay. Were the coons moving in your area, and was you having some action as well? Yeah, we had a, we we seen a few coons, but just caught a couple of tough breaks and didn't get to score on any. Okay. All right. Uh, tell me a little bit about Josie. Um, Sire and Dam, what, what do we got going on here? She's off of Goose Creek Woody and a female off of Bushwhacker. And you're a co-owner with your dad? With my dad and Kyle Gunnels. Okay, all right. Yeah. You guys come out of the, which zone? Uh, La Plata, Missouri. La Plata, Missouri, okay. Yep. And you win one night, two nights, what what did you have out there? <clears throat> we had uh, one night cast win with six and a quarter. All right, so she's looked good out there. Yeah, she looked good out there. And yeah. uh, just had a couple tough breaks here and then things didn't go as we would like for him to go, but you're the eventual winner. Yep. Yes, All right, sir. very good. Um, you're a $3,500 winner right now. I'm assuming you want some more. Yep, yes, sir. You come out here for more. Yep, yep, All that's right. what we came for. <clears throat> when she walked by today, after you got your picture taken, and I spoon with your dad and, and partner there, I noticed that her tail's about four inches long. Yeah. And she <laughs> is by far the shortest tailed dog that we've got here this weekend. I would say so. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about how, how that come to be. 
uh she she's she's kind of crazy and uh she she was biting at the end of her tail and it was getting infected so uh i made the decision to dock her tail all right in preparation for this hunt here after the zones what did you do uh she actually coming into zone she just come out of heat so i she wasn't hunted up so uh she we just kind of got through there and then i got her hunted back up and back in shape so how far of travel time did you have from from where she would be kenneled to where you had to hunt four hours okay yep all right yep. well congratulations to yep. you man thank you you're you're a winner and uh hope you keep uh, winning some more okay all thank right, you Kyle. sir thank you <clears throat> okay guys there you have it uh, i want to tell you that they came out of cast 23 josie advances out of cast 23 again it was a three dog cast coming in here tonight so now that we know who the the winner is uh of the cast let, let's talk a little more in depth break down that scorecard for us now yeah um so what, what he shared is uh they own 155 minutes because obviously at that point in time uh one dog got scratched i'm not sure for what it doesn't say on here it just says he got scratched and the other one minus out now what happens is um in a minus out situation so uh it, within the rules uh you're allotted 400 minus in that two hours if you get more than four if you get 400 minus or more uh, it scratches you out of the cast. And so at that point in time, that's what happened in this particular situation, which it left him the only one being left in the cast. So with him the only one being left in the cast and with this new format, it allowed him to advance. Interesting statistic, uh, the Hawk Dog is out of the uh, Missouri, La Plata, Missouri zone, and so is Josie Wells. So uh, uh, zone uh, one or, or, or the La Plata, Missouri, uh, the La Plata, Missouri has two of them that have advanced out of this. And you could hear uh, he did really good at the zones with her. Uh, tonight was just kind of an off night. But, you know, again, he would have had an hour and five minutes left to hunt, you know, had it not been the elimination style of event. And that's why people like hunting this way. You beat the dogs that you're against. So absolutely. Great. Well, hadn't taken any time at all because we're about to go right back to Rick again. Looks like we've got our third cast winner of the night about to come in. So let's take it to Rick Stretch. So we're back again here and we got a we got our third cast winner. Uh, we're looking at Steel, owned by Dustin Brummett. And uh, Dustin, tell us a little bit about what went out out there tonight. Uh, <clears throat> draw the, uh, you know, a tough cast of dogs. Uh, uh, you know, just uh, 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 see, uh, see. How many coons did you guys score on? Uh, we scored on seven coons. Okay. And uh, see, I think uh, <clears throat> he was on. I think he was on four of them. Okay. And, and split, and uh, uh, see, four or five. And but it was a tough cast of dogs, and. Uh, you know he he uh, he caught the right breaks and you know it's just uh, you know. So what kind of score did you wind up with tonight? Uh, Six seventy five. Okay. Yeah. What zone regional did you advance from? Uh, I come out of uh, uh, Lancaster, Kentucky. Okay. Did you have one win or two wins or how did you have? I, that? I had uh, 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 Saturday night score of five seventy five. And that was enough to get you through. Mm -hmm. yes, okay. Sir. Now you own this hound together with anybody or is, or are you a sole owner uh, i'm i'm the owner and so you're doing it all doing it and and uh, own his mother and daddy too all right yeah. tell us a little bit about what you did to get to where you're at here today i i've i've, I've hunted hard and uh you know uh you know five six nights a week and uh i get up and go to work and uh and he's uh you know he's uh able to get struck and and then have his coons and you know he's very accurate so yeah very good um well you're in the top 24 now you know yeah you're a 3500 dollar winner that's got to be exciting yeah but you're wanting more i'm sure oh yeah you yeah, want yeah. to advance farther yeah um what will you guys do now whenever you leave here tonight what's what's going to be what's going to be your preparation for getting ready tomorrow night uh we're going to get some food and get fueled up for tomorrow that's what all we're right. going to do all right man congratulations all right. on your win thank you look forward to seeing you tomorrow all right. Okay, guys, well, you got to hear from Rick. Of course, he's down there with Steele. Uh, Steele, th this cast, I got to take a peek at the scorecard, and I want you to go over it with us uh, here in just a second. One of the things I'd like to hear about from you is, th let's touch on the dog's age here in just a second, but 
Tell us about this. This is kind of the scorecard you expect to see here at the TOC, isn't it? Yeah, this was an action pack. Uh, this was an action pack cast, and uh, this was a very tough cast uh, that was that was won by a uh, a one year old uh, Trian Walker male. And uh, matter of fact, there was there was two dogs in this cast that was in the top ten of the pickums, um, the the stylish little whitey dog, and obviously the uh, Lone Pine uh, lady female. Uh, was both in this cast and they scored on a, like you said they scored on seven coons and uh, it looks to me like um, you know he it looks to me like he treed two and got a piece of two that's what the scorecard shows I wasn't out there or whatever uh, but all the other dogs in the cast tree uh, tree you know scored on as well and it just looks to you know it looks to me like he got it looks to me like he got enough of uh, of the action that was going out there uh, wins the cast with 675 plus and uh, you know there was a uh, there was another dog that had 425, another one that had two and a quarter, another one that had 150. But uh, I, uh, you know, one thing that's awesome about these hunts is, uh, um, and this the, the this uh, style of format and stuff, anybody can win this. And I told someone earlier today, and I still believe this. Uh, or, or I, I said I, I kind of had the feeling this year. And I don't know why uh, that a d dark horse uh, could possibly win this thing. And I still believe uh, that a dark horse, my dark horse uh, pick, and it's not really a dark horse, but a dog that hasn't been promoted on the, uh, on the big level uh, stage, I guess, uh, was a two-track dog. He may prove me wrong. Uh, but the, uh, you know, here's a dog that uh, is relatively unheard of. I mean, he's a one-year-old dog, so he hasn't had a chance, you know, and uh, beat some really tough competition tonight to advance. I can guarantee you, uh, this young man is excited. Obviously, he's owner, handler, owns the dog's mom and dad. And you know, it, it's when you see something like this, that's what makes this hunt so exciting. And and I know that this was the for, this was why this format was started. Oh sure. Is to is anybody has an, anybody has a chance. Yeah. Uh, to compete at this event, you know, uh, for the way for the way that the uh, the hunt format is set up, you know, he he got this dog, he owned the mom and dad, he went out and got the five cast wins, and got and now he's in the top twenty four, yeah. and uh, he's obviously confident that he can win this. Oh yeah, and I love what he said. You know, we came in tonight, hunted hard, ready to go, fuel up. You can take a look, all the dogs in positive. Really good scores there on that scorecard. I think we're going to see more of this young man. One-year-old dog seems remarkable to me. So we've also got yet another cast winner that has come in. So we're going to go right back again to Rick. And look who we have here, a familiar face, friend of mine for a long time, Jeff Rickliffs and uh, Hobo our uh, next cast winner that we're going to visit with here. Jeff, tell us a little bit about your cast tonight and uh, how your dog looked. Uh, we had our, a super cast. Um, Mr. Cody Carter, local man, uh, Doug Cundiff's son-in-law, he judged and got us, took us to a real spot. Um, he did lie, though. He said flat, and we walked about 200 yards of flat, and the rest was hills. All so, hills. And I, you know, did I'm the dogs go the right way? Did they go the well, way they said? Well, one dog went the wrong way. Um, okay. The other three went the right way. And We talked about this earlier today. He was kind of glad that you drew, Cody, because you thought that at least you would be in the flatland <laughs> yeah. with him. He said it's not too bad in here, and we all said, we don't know what your too bad is, but this is bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, short, fat guys don't like hills. Why would you wind up with a final score? Uh, 375. And uh, they withdrew with about 14 minutes left. Um, mine was setting through there about a mile treat again, and I don't think anybody wanted to no, walk, I wanted to walk in there. So, but uh, we had a real hunt. Dennis Thornhill, um, very good friend of mine from Missouri, always packing a good dog. Mac 2, um, Noel Goodwin from Arkansas. Um, he's hunting a little young dog, 19 months old. And then uh, Brandon and Henry Kidd, which okay. are very good friends from Indiana. Sure. In the cast with a good little female. And um, I had first first strike right out of the truck. I don't know if mine went in the ground or something, but he didn't bark didn't bark for a while, and everything else was barking around. And the Mac Two got treed across the road where we didn't really want to be. He said there's a lot of bad hills over there, but he said it was okay to hunt. So we go over there and score him, and when we pull him off, he trees the heck dog. Noel did right by the road, and mine set and passed him three or four hundred yards. And I said, you hear me through there, and he I treed. So we went to heck, and then and then I went around and handled mine. And they come right in, and Heck had a slick. I had a coon. We cut back loose. Um, I cut back loose. He trees Heck again over here. Not, he hadn't been on the ground too long. 
and there was we get in there was a little confusion heck wasn't there and it was the female so he took a minus and he trees the female and as we're shining that tree mine makes about three barks on the ground 800 it through there and comes treat again and she had a coon she had 50 and 50 and 125 so we go to me and i got a coon up a bush basically cut mine back loose they're all hammering around in there now mac two is gone he's out of here and he's been treed the whole time but he's went back we tried to send him where he needed to be and he spun around and went back the wrong way in some bad hills just a bad break for him um he couldn't hear him right he treated coon and was gone but so mine's but he wanted me to go back towards the other ones well mine's not going to go towards dogs barking so he spun back around and went the opposite way and we go in there and the little female had a uh had a den she had a coon it would made it a little more interesting we he had only been 50 50 behind the the heck dog was treed he had a coon pulled him off um i was treed 0.95 actually and you could hear him good ringing and, and uh, there was just a few minutes like i said 14 minutes i think and they're like we're done so they withdrew drove around got him he had another one up a bush so the hobo's owned by john strickland and doug galbraith yes sir how long have you been hunting this dog i know it's been a little while but i don't remember how long uh, we bought this dog um he's three now be four in july okay uh, we bought him from mike gilbert a local right. uh very good pup man here locally and um we bought him 16 months old so i've had him two years okay. look two years in december so just a little over two years and um i call him a bad luck dog uh, he's one of the nicest dogs i I've, I've hunted uh and, you know strickland will tell you and he's as good a coon dog as i've probably ever turned loose bar none of them sure but boy he's got a black cloud i mean he if he can if there's a way for him to get beat in a close cast it it, it just seems to happen and yeah it's, you come out of the lagrange yeah regional and uh, what was your score up there did you win one I round two rounds i got beat by a quarter on friday night and saturday night he came out swinging and um I end up with eight and a quarter. All right. So, yeah, one round. Good so, you're, to we're down to 24. Yeah. And what a feeling that is. Oh, huh? The losing streak I've been on, I'm very excited. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. Jeff, congratulations you, on your I win tonight. It. Yes, sir. Well, there you have it. Another one of our winners for tonight. I'll tell you what, Steve, I always love to hear from Jeff. I mean, the guy is just great. I love the recap that he gave us also. You know, and John Strickland, you know, I mean, the dog's name Strix. Uh, it's another colorful character. Hopefully we're going to get to visit both with Jeff and John and hear a little bit more from both those guys because it's always entertaining when, when they win their cast and they come in. You know, he talked a little bit about the scorecard and the other dogs withdrawing. Why don't you recap it for us right quick? Tell us what yeah. you're seeing there. Absolutely. Well, you know, again, it was a very competitive cast. I mean, uh, but, you know, he, he scored on two, and, uh, you know, like you heard that he said, he was sitting there, two there with another one. Um, as the hunt was winding down, they couldn't beat him, obviously. Uh, you know, Jeff's obviously a very good friend of mine, talked to him a lot, and uh, I know he's been on a, he, you know, it happens. You can, you know, I've said about these hunts, you can hunt a really good one, and sometimes it just doesn't, you know, anything that can go wrong uh, can go wrong. And uh, uh, I, I'm excited for him to be able to advance on here. You know, what's even what was even more on that interview, I guess I took away from is they had a really good cast. You know, yeah. uh, you know that sometimes you have really good casts and sometimes, you know, competition can consume you. But, you know, to have a good cast like that, see him advance. I've obviously hunted with Hobo, uh, have seen him do some uh, really good work, um, you know, and, and he's a dog that, I mean, he's, he's definitely coon dog enough to win this thing. Sure. You know, he's definitely coon dog enough to win this thing. He scored on two, and, and by what the card looks is all the rest of them scored on one. Yeah, and, and one uh, thing for sure, you know, any dog that John Strickland is part owner in that bring, he brings this event has a chance. We were both smiling through that because I took a peek, uh, and I know you did too. I, I lied when I said I was going to slap it. I did let you look. You don't have the pencil anymore with the eraser. But I got to say that, you know, you and I will hopefully get to the picks here in just a little bit. You and I had both picked that hobo dog. Our, our, our colleague Rick down there, I don't think that he... Uh, did quite as well on that one, but we're going to get to give him a little grief too. I'm not sure who Rick picked in that cast, but I don't think it was the hobo dog. So I'm looking forward to giving him a little bit of grief later on. And I know absolutely you are. One thing I've learned really uh, uh, about this after doing, I think this is our third event together, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You yep. two can surely give it to one another. And I think that's true for most of the, uh, 
He's still waiting for the day that he can pick him right more than, yep. you know. Well, you guys that. know. I mean, y'all are students of the game. You <laughs> studied. I mean, you got a ton of stats there also that I was really impressed to look at the spreadsheet that you brought in. I, you know, so uh, let's take a look at some of those stats right now, particularly if you've got any on Hobo, the dog that just won, won its cast. Um, well, we... Uh, uh, coming into uh, coming into this event, uh, one thing that was pretty neat that in uh, Trevor from UKC, want to give a huge shout out to him. He does a lot of this work, helps get a lot of this information around. But we actually had um, this year coming to the finals. This hunt is a tough hunt to get to the finals, but there's dogs that just simply keep knocking on the door. And there was actually two dogs coming in here this weekend that have been to the finals here three years in a row, which is really incredible. Uh, to be able to come in there three years in a row, and that's the Willow female and the uh, Old South Stylish Knockout. Now, uh, Knockout is a nine-year-old uh, tree and walker male from Kentucky. And, uh, you know, when you knock on the door that consistent, uh, you're going to get a breakthrough. You know, just like Hobo, he was talking about the streak of bad luck that he had with Hobo. But he kept knocking on the door, and now he's in the top 24. Um, <coughs> excuse me. There's actually uh, 17 dogs that uh, was here last year in the finals, and they're back again this year. And uh, I look for some of them to advance. Some, I mean, some of them, uh, obviously, uh, uh, Knockout being one of them, but a lot of good dogs, Dominator being one of them. And then there's actually five dogs here total that was here in 2021, so. How uh, many have we got that have been here all three years? Two, two, two dogs. dogs, yep. So uh, five that were here in 21, and three that have been here. Two. Or two. two that have been here all three years. Three, yes. two. It's, yeah, three that have been here, or two yep. that have been here for all three years along yep. the way. Yep. Yeah. Who are those two? The, the Willow female and the Old South, old South Stylish Knockout dog yep. from Kentucky. And I, the, the Willow female, as I recall, one of those years went pretty doggone. Yeah, she got, in the, she? she got in the top 16. Yeah. May have been in the final cast now that I think about I the very first I believe we've had Willow year. in the final cast. We'll take it. That's one statistic I'm surprised that he doesn't have for us. We'll take yeah. a look at that. I think Willow, that yeah, I'm pretty confident that I think Willow did make the final cast uh, the very first year. And I don't know uh, how far Knockout would have advanced the first two years. Yeah. yeah but that's but, a dog that, man, we've been seeing a lot of through mm -hmm. all of the major events. And uh, what's cool about the Knockout dog is last year a pup out of him that Logan Rose was hunting made the top six. Sure. Let's talk a little bit about the sires here that have multiple dogs as well. You got a statistic on that for us? I do. And actually, uh, what's really impressive is the Willie dog that, uh, that won the uh, world hunt a few years ago. He actually, uh, he was actually the leading male in sire numbers. He, had, he has six dogs that are sired by Willie that have made it here, Willow being one of them. Yeah. Um, that are here, uh, and then uh, there was actually three, uh, three men, or uh, I think there was four males that had three pups, uh, one being Lone Pine Muscle Tracks, uh, another one being Neosha Cuz, uh, uh, Schooner River Fred Bear, uh, Daniel Wilson, um, his dog from up in northern Indiana, has three in here, uh, Power Pack, obviously, uh, you know, a very a, a dog that's reproduced a lot of good ones, one being the Apollo dog that's here uh, for the second time. And then uh, they uh, and then there's actually uh, several sires or four sires that had two, uh, two dogs in, one being the, uh, a blue dog by the name of Bo Diddley. Uh, another one, Big Country, uh, has two uh, that are sired here, Big Money, had two that are here, Money Maxed Out. Uh, Kevin Cable's done a great job with that line there. And then wipe out three. Can't take nothing away from him. He has three of them here. But what's really impressive, I think, is uh, my buddy from up north, uh, Leland Miller. Uh, I've hunted with this female, uh, actually, uh, when, he was, when he hunted her in the hunts. Uh, a little female called uh, uh, She's Out of Your League Libby has three pups in this hunt sired by three different males. Wow. One female. And... Uh, he uh, and the two track dog is out, out, is out of Libby and Muscle Tracks, and that's my dark horse favorite. And I and he's and I talked to Leland earlier today, and uh, he feels confident coming into this hunt. And then uh, Johnson Creek Abbey, um, uh, to give you an idea, uh, Nick Emmel, uh, he was obviously here. He was obviously here a year ago. 
uh, with, uh, with Gabby, I believe. And uh, he has two of them, Gabby and the Crash Dog, which is one of my pickums. Uh, Crash is one of my pickums to, uh, uh, to be you know, of the top five here. And then uh, a female called Bobby Sue has two of them here. So, um, you know, I think probably what stands out to me out of all this, uh, one sire to have six uh, pups that was sired, uh, not alone. I mean, this can happen. Um, you know, there's, there's sires that will pop up. Uh, that you know, they just become reproducers. Oh, they're just dom they're just it is dom dominant they're reproducers. reproducers. But for a, for a world champion mm -hmm. to 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 be a reproducer like that, uh, and to have have him have six of them here, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. you know, that's probably what stands out to me the most. And uh, you know, several of these other ones have three or four in it. So yep, that's absolutely. We, we've got some awesome dogs here. But we also have a special guest that's about to be joining us here in just a second. As a matter of fact, I think we're going to bring him on right now. We were talking about Jeff and John, and it's the hey, man, the myth, the legend you. himself, John Strickland. Yeah, Welcome, buddy. How you doing? Good to see you. I, I want to know one thing. How did he get all this knowledge in the last 45 minutes? Because this morning... <laughs> He knew none of this, okay? He's been cramming, I promise you. <laughs> I thought you taught him everything he knew. No, I... Hey, well, you know, you know, you got to take, you got to take these exams, you got to take these quick exams. That's how it works, John. Yeah, yeah, well... He's got clip he, notes. He's, he's uh... I can't even remember what my dog's off of, and he's done figured out Abby and this one and that one, and I'm like, okay, all right. He's, uh, you know... I think I figured it out. I think he's taking a sneak peek at Jamie Eastep's Coonhounds 101. Yeah. Is that how you got this smart? No, well, I, no. Alan just gave me strict instructions, so I didn't have no choice but to step up. He, he's supposed to have like a cooking bonnet or something. Suzanne and <laughs> and Tina and Doug and was saying. I wondered. That, I wondered that that's, that's what's going on around on social media. If I was yeah. going to wear a, a, a chef hat or something like uh, that, uh, and they've been they've been really giving me a hard time I, on that. I heard he either had to have a golf. Uh, club in his hand today, a chef hat or a speedo, and I know I didn't want to see him in a speedo. <laughs> not so, a speedo or know, a French maid. No, no speedo. In, in, uh, but a speedo in a chef hat would have been really bad. <laughs> you know? hey. Anyway, oh, yeah. well, John, man, it's good to have you. First you off, I want yeah. to say good congratulations. Good I mean, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Hobo, just came we, uh, in. We brought. You gotta we, feel uh, good. We brought three in the top 96. Um, the one I was hunting, little female Randy Smith, uh, raised uh, Lone Pine Lady. We got beat by the steel dog. He he did a real job. Had a we had a good cast. We, it was a shootout. I ended up treeing a, a den in a in a big goat farm. Believe it or not, and uh, a goat farm for a real. goat. No, a real goat farm. A guy. It was it was pretty wild. There must have been I don't know how many goats was in there, but this dude had blue lights like lights, and you'd walk by and a blue light would come on. He had a tent with lights under, and he had music rock music playing. And I thought there was somebody having a party. Is that for and, the goats or what? Yeah, so I walk into the goat field while they gotta go score another dog, and uh, I'm like, well, there's nobody here, and there's goats everywhere. I'm like, man, it's kind of weird, you know? And uh, come to find out, the guy, he, he rolled up with a gun and a four-wheeler, but he was nice, he was, uh, you know, but, but the blue light and, the, and the, the tent and the music was to keep predators, I guess, from getting his goats. Um, and all he was worried about, hey, them dogs ain't after my goats, are we? No, he goes, all right, we're good, we're good. You know, he was a really nice guy. Could have been bad. Um, but the steel dog, uh, you know, I, I, you say this all the time, and, well, you don't want to say this. You always want to be leading in the first little bit. And I have this home, and I'm always like, man, I won't be leading. I'm a much better at the end guy than I am in the beginning guy. So right out the truck, I have 75 and 100 quarter in there by myself, coon. Cut her back loose, strike me for 100, treat me for 100 quarter, cross the road, coon, you know, four and a quarter. I'm, and I'm not stepping high because I know we've still got, you know, an hour. And but you got to be feeling good at what, that point. Uh, at, at this, this point in time, what do the other dogs have? Yeah. Um, the little steel dog had like 175, you know. Uh, so 175, I'm sitting at four and a quarter. Another dog had minus. Uh, another dog backed me and took a minus late. And um, I've been there many times in the first 30 minutes you're killing them and at the end you you get killed you know so I, I wasn't real I was there but I'm like man surely this is a one hour cast you know <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> uh, I'm like well I think Alan said one hour guys and nobody believed me so you know um Alan sitting over here getting a big laugh yeah, out of that I know he said an hour we need to master hounds we need to look this up I think we get recorded um but we walk off this tree I have to walk across the little field, 
and, and recast. And uh, the steel dog had been retrieved with another dog up on top of the hill. So we get there, and he's, they got a coon. I find a coon for him immediately. <coughs> I give him 300. I'm still holding four and a quarter. And uh, the other dogs were kind of, one of them drew a minus, uh, and one of them just backed. And so we cut back loose again, and uh, steel got left-handed. Mine was like 0.88. So I get struck for a hundred. Now I'm feeling good, you know, and I'm struck back for a hundred. And uh, Steel gets treated. He's struck for 75 and gets treated. I'm like, well, I'm not only am I struck for a hundred, but I'm almost a mile and you can hear. Her. So I'm thinking, hey, we're gonna walk a lot of this time out and she's normally got coons. Well, she come all the way back. She trailed this old bad track all the way back within 500 of us, 500 yards. Steel dog's got a, a tree that looks slick. Um, we find a little, small coon up in there <clears throat> and uh I, I thermaled it and found it immediately for the guy so here he is you know i want to get off tree and uh tree me he gets still cut back loose and when i was at the goat tree waiting i had a den there i didn't i walked up and could see a big den so while i'm at the goat tree waiting they walked in and said he's retreed steel so so he retreed uh, before you even come and scored you well they had to go to another dog and score him and then when they came to me they had said, hey, John, just so you know, he's retreated steel. So I'm on a den, and you can see, it's got a slit in the tree, and you can see as I squalled, you can see him moving up, but I would have had to get him 40 foot up. You know, it, it wasn't going to happen, so I didn't waste a lot of time. I needed to get back off the leash. So I walk a, a little ways, cut back loose, and um, steel's treed. We get back in there, and he, he's got another coon. Well, now I'm treed, but I'm not struck. Nobody struck, so I just need him to get off the chain so I can strike the tree for 100 and 100 and a quarter. And, a, and a, another boy strikes to, he kind of blocked, but anyway, it's okay. Um, he strikes, and, and then um, there was 10 minutes left, and uh, they said, you're going to make him cut. I'm treated again now. I've not treated her yet. You're going to make him cut, and I'm like, well, we got 10 minutes. If I've got a coon and he can draw a minus, if we was under the six, the stationary, I wouldn't right. let him cut. I'm like, bud, it's too big a hunt. You, I'm going to make you cut. And this other boy trees so that he can stay leash lock or, you know, take his option to go to me. And when he does that, it's over. I told him congratulations. We walked in. I had another coon, but we didn't put it on the card. Um, but the dog deserved a win. The dog, the dog treated more coons th than mine. And, uh, you know, he get beat. Uh, dog did a great job. Uh, boy, we, we had a great cast. I mean, you know, it, it was as uh, smooth as it can be. Um, I mean, when a man runs up with you on a four-wheeler and a shotgun and he's nice about it, you know, pretty good cast. And, uh, <laughs> you know, there are a couple things. We've got another dog coming in, so we're going to have to move mm -hmm. on. There are a couple things that I want us to come back to later on, and I hope you'll come mm -hmm. back up here with us. Really impressed by two things there. First of all, guys, right off the bat, steel trees, John finds... Oh yeah, the coon Absolutely. right away. You're in competition, yeah, yeah. but you're finding it. Nice. And uh, then, the, yeah, the deserved win part is something. So yeah, that's one of the reasons we love having you here. That's the kind of sportsmanship that we love to see at, at this event, buddy. And I appreciate you coming Thank up you, here. Sir. I know it was hard to get you this close to Burkholder again today, but hey, Burkholder was at you. my house. He was supposed to be at my house the day before last. He said I'll be there around five. He ended up at uh, 24 hours later. He ended up there. So, I'm not going to touch yeah. that for reasons I'll disclose later, yeah. but John, it happens, yeah, right, we, Steve? Yeah, absolutely, and uh, we, we look forward to uh, to hearing more on uh, on some of that side of it. You know, um, from the hunters, mm -hmm. from a hunter's perspective, you know, mm -hmm. on on that uh, part of that, and we've got some uh, great questions that we want to ask you and bring up. And stuff. Yeah. You know, when you you talk about what what you did to deserve and what you know when you do it so long, a win that you don't feel good about. Is hollow and that, that's not a win at the end of the day. Now, when I was younger and first started, I mean, you want to win so bad, you'll, you'll do some things that you probably don't feel good about, but after you get a little age on, you realize, hey, it, it's no good. It changes the game, Dad. Well, you. when you win and you go home and lay down at night and you think about it, man, that other dude should have won this cast. That whatever you're hunting for, money or trophy, it doesn't mean a whole lot at the end of the day. That's and when, and when, these, when you can ever get to the point that, you know, it ends up good. Yeah, well, buddy, we enjoy Thank having you. you always. We'll get you back up. But now we're fixing to take it back down to 
Rick Stretch here, who's got the cast winner. Thank you again, John Strickland. Let's go to Rick. It's the colorful Steve Basham, and uh, he's hunting an old cold whiskey. Steve, tell us a little bit about your hunt this evening. Uh, it went pretty good. Uh, we cut loose, and I struck under the minute. Um, he carried it on about six, seven hundred yards, and uh, we had another dog get treed in the time frame, and he treed his dog in first, and I got treed in second. Uh, first and first, and he had a raccoon. I uh, cut him from there. He got about six tenths of a mile, got treed in a big old den. By that time, we had walked enough to all the other trees. Everybody else had den trees, and he treed the only coon. So one coon, one your cat. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Tell us a little, he, he's owned by? Bruce Bartz from Maryland. Okay, and and how did you and Bruce come to get together here? Uh, we kind of were partners on a, another dog at one point in time, yeah. and uh, he said he had a pretty nice dog that he wanted me to handle for, and uh, he sent Buddy to me, and I guess the rest is kind of history and after that. And you're finding out that this one here is just as good. Oh, yeah. Um, what uh, regional did you come from? Uh, Lancaster, Kentucky. Did you win one round, two rounds? What uh, happened up double there? Double cast. Double cast winner. What kind of scores did you have? Uh, 250. Okay. All right. That's yeah, pretty ugly, but uh, we won our cast both nights, and uh, we got here. So the folks at home don't realize what a struggle it was for you to find Oof. this place today. You yeah. come charging in here. Do you, we have to talk about you that? You parked road? a quarter of a mile away, <laughs> crossed the railroad tracks, come charging in here, yeah. thinking you were late, but you weren't. And uh, But tonight you found your way back and you found your way into the winter circle. Yeah, I uh, found my way down the right gravel road the first time. They all look time. the same out here. I mean, they, they all, all do. look the same. They all do. What's this dog's bloodline, if you know? So he is uh, directly off of Kingpin, which is a, a lipper semen dog. And he's also off of... Uh, Honey Cove, Darren Wiseman uh, made okay. this. Darren Wiseman made this cross. Uh, Honey Cove was off of uh, Lone Pine Honey, and uh, uh, Honey Cove was also off of Bone Collector and Lone Pine Honey. Okay, so, very good. Yep. So you're a uh, first round winner. Thirty five hundred dollars in your pocket right now. Well, you get not enough, all of it. You good enough, or you want to? <laughs> we're going. You, we're going all the way for going fifty thousand, bud. Come on. I hear you. Come on. I hear you, man. Congratulations on your win, Steve. Hey, thank you very much. Good sir. seeing you up here. I'm glad you found your way back. Oh, definitely. I'll try better next time. All right. We got another cast winner here waiting in the wings, and uh, we'll be right back with you. Fantastic. Well, looks like Buddy had a really good day. Let's go over to Steve. Steve, let's take a look at that scorecard. Well, I, you know, this is one of them casts where uh, 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 one score, uh, one scoreable tree uh, with plus points wins this cast. And, uh, you know, what probably stands out to me is, uh, you know, he, he obviously, as you heard from him, he scores on this, uh, he scores on this uh, tree and uh, he doesn't pull any minus. He keeps his nose clean. He obviously makes a den tree uh, there at the end. Uh, one other dog uh, pulls a minus. And uh, the other two dogs just, it wasn't their night. They just didn't get, you know. So, you know, again, when you, when you win these big events, you have to figure out how to win some of these casts. And, uh, you know, uh, scoring on the only coon they treat uh, way in there, uh, sometimes that's the, that's the break he needed. And, uh, you know, them are the tough ones to win, but, you know, it, it's kind of the ones that you win that you, you think to yourself, that's the one I needed to win. You know, uh, it just went my way. So, yeah, you know, and the thing that struck out to me, stuck out to me when I took a look at the scorecard there, all those 125s that were circled on there. I mean, we had a lot of action in this cast, it looks like, looking at the scorecard. You know, you've got... Uh, Four times that you had a dog come in first. Unfortunately, three of them wound up being circles. Buddy just had the good fortune of actually finding game in a tree, yep. and uh, yeah, that made a made a huge, huge difference along the way. Yep. Again, another young man that uh, we've been seeing a little bit of, and I'm sure he's very, very excited, like seeing these young guys, you know, coming uh -huh. in there. And he's a hunter. Oh, he, he is a hunter. He's a hunter. He There's, hunts a lot. He hunts hard. Yep. No and, doubt about uh, it. You know, I want to give a shout out to him. Uh, you know. Uh, you know, he served our country and, uh, you know, so he, you know, pretty actively for a while. And, and so now he's been able to enjoy the, the side of hunting and, uh, Steve, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you for your service. Uh, it's always greatly appreciated and, uh, congratulations. Excited to have you advance. Yes, sir. Well, looks like they're starting to line up for us out there too, Steve, because we've got another one, uh, that just came in. So we're about to send it back down to Rick stretch with our next cast winner, Rick. All right, we're back again with another cast winner. 
and it's Travis Neal. And uh, Travis, tell us a little bit about your hunt tonight. Um, well, we started off there, and uh, we turned loose, struck a coon probably before the minute, and we waited a minute to get struck, and, and uh, as soon as the minute was up, I, I struck Crowder in, and a dog got treed just out there in front of us, about 100 yards, and had a den tree, and Crowder had, in, in the first 10 minutes of the honey, he, he was about 300 yards to the west, and uh, went in there, and he had two coons. So I had a first and a first on that, and um, we turned loose again. We turned loose again, and um, uh, another dog treated a coon, and uh, turned Crowder loose again, and Crowder treated another coon, and then the other dog treat another coon so it wow was, you guys were in the coon store. it was back and forth back and forth it was pretty nerve-wracking right yeah right you had, had a four dog cast did you uh, yes okay how many coons do you think you guys scored on? five scored on five uh -huh. and, and you were on how many and probably treated a few more okay but um i was on two and and um uh the other guy was on two okay tell us who owns crowder um a guy in texas by the name of kevin rash and and how did you and kevin come to be a team here this weekend um uh kevin he um, um he bought this dog at a year old and um and had him a little while and i kind of he won um he won the world championship in his in his roping horses and he said i'm ready to focus on my dogs so um i got the dog from him and we've been kind of push him for about the last year and my son hunts him most of the time but he had his acts and didn't oh, bring him up this weekend him. so he would so, have been handling so, maybe this weekend if he didn't have that going he missed on. out on some money yeah i heard that so you're at 3500 right now <laughs> yeah. and, and a good payday that is but we're yes. moving on you're wanting to move on i'm sure sure yeah what region did you come out of uh conway conway arkansas, conway, arkansas. Mm -hmm. okay down there one cast wind two cast winds uh, one cast win. What kind of score? Uh, 450. 450. Uh -huh. yeah. I've hunted out of the Conway area down there. Good flat area down there. Some water once in a while. We got uh, into water. Yeah. Now, the, tonight, what kind of terrain did you guys hunt in? Uh, we turned loose um, straight over a hill, and uh, it wasn't much of a hill, and then it was just kind of little rolling hills with plenty of coon. Okay. What did you do to prepare to get to where we're at here tonight? Um, I've chased this dog many, many, many miles. His name's Crowder, but it should have been Traveler. <laughs> He's the goingest blue dog probably ever. Yeah. Um, you, know. you might have mentioned it, but the age? How old is He's he? three years. He just three. turned three. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, congratulations on your win, man. Yeah, congratulations with the blue dog. Huh? Uh, that is true. How about that? That is. That is. Very good. <laughs> All right. We've got a couple more cast winners in the wings, and we'll bring them to you here shortly. Thank you very much, Rick. We appreciate that. And I'll tell you what, it's good to see Kevin. Hate that his son had the ACTs and wasn't able to be here. And, and we're, we're not going to have long because, as Rick said, we do have a couple more waiting in the wings. But there, there were a couple things that I noticed I want you to talk about there. First off, uh, Kevin had said five. It looks to me, looking at that scorecard, that they actually had six yeah, trade they, is that correct yeah they, and they did and they definitely uh they definitely was uh was scoring on them and, and i tell you something by looking at the card um you know what can you tell he, he he got on two uh two trees had two two scorable trees uh the other ones that scored a couple of uh, coons apiece uh had pulled some minus and uh, with him being struck for a hundred you know, at that point in time, it was a matter of keeping your nose clean, and it looks like he did a good job of that. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what it takes to advance, you know. Oh, no, and no. Uh, you heard that he's, he's hunting. A, I mean, I, he told me the same thing today out there, that uh, he's got one that hustles, and uh, it looks like it hustled him on into a win. So, absolutely, I, it's, uh, you know, uh, scoring on that many and, uh, and, and being able to win it on two, uh, pretty impressive. Really. Yes, sir, it definitely is. Also impressive. First dog that's not a treeing walker that we've had a blue tick and uh, first dog, not a, not a TW, our first blue tick to come in here tonight. Of course, the field was dominated by the walker dogs. We had a blue tick come through. But right now, we're fixing to take it back down to Rick again because we've got yet another cast winner. Here we go, Rick. All right, we're back with another cast winner here this evening. And uh, I'm standing here... Uh, I, I made the comment today that I think this dog right here was one of the best looking dogs and I was hoping I would get to chat with these guys. Um, so we got uh, Jensen Poole and John Charles. Uh, both of you 
own a portion of the dog. Yes, sir. And Jensen, you're doing the handling tonight. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. tell me a little bit about your hunt this evening. Uh, well, um, I believe we went about uh, 30 miles or so north of here, kind of towards Lafayette, and uh, started off there and was, was warned we were going to be putting some hills, and we dang sure were. Okay. Uh, we, we, but we were in a lot of coons. Uh, Drew out with a dog, uh, Backwood something, I think was out of shack. We drew out with a, a stud dog from Kentucky named Knockout. Okay, yep, Knockout's Knockout. been here two or three times. This makes the he, third time, I mean. He said he was the oldest dog here, nine yeah. years old. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and it was a shootout between the two of us. And then the other dog in our cast was uh, Nick Emmel with Gabby. Okay. And uh, we we were in the hills. We turned loose there in some, some pretty steep country and, and went off to train coons right off the bat. Uh, dog struck under the minute. I didn't. I struck in for 50. Um, she went in there three or 400 yards, got treed. Uh, as we were heading to her, the Emmel's boy, uh, Gabby, and the shack dog got treed, split, so they went to their tree, we went to hers. She had a coon there. And uh, at the same time, we he treed in knockout, maybe my direction, possibly on my tree, but they were split about 100 yards. Okay. And knockout has a coon, she's got a coon, put her up, I think that put her up a quarter over knockout. Go back to score them other fellas tree, and. Uh, couldn't find a coon there uh, uh, so that tree was minus and uh, from there we recut I recut after we scored knockouts tree and by the time that we scored uh, Emmel's and Shack, the shack dog's tree she was treated again couldn't quite hear but we walked that direction she was 0. 0.6 and uh, on her second tree and uh, then we, we was able to get her treated in she had another coon there and um, the knockout was split three or four hundred yards and he had another coon. So we was ticked for tack all night. Uh, I think we scored on eight coons. Wow. And possibly a ninth. It's not, hard to keep score, it is. scoring on that many coons. It kids. is, it is. And it, all the action that you and, got going on. And we probably saw another six or seven sitting up in the, yeah. just sitting up laid up in the on the field edge. Some of us have made a couple trips back and forth to town here this evening and the coons are moving good just right around here tonight. We, we saw three up right as soon as we left the woods headed back to here so they are yeah. they're out and about. They're out and about. It's hey. glad to see the dog what she'll do in that many coons because back home it's we don't really yeah, get to see right. that many. Yeah yeah so you come out of what regional that you come? Uh, Conway Arkansas. Conway yeah. all right. We're just east of Dallas. Did you win one round or two rounds down there? I uh, won one round. One round got us through Friday night we had a score of 500. 500. Did you even hunt the late uh, second round? We hunted but she didn't. Okay. I guess she knew she had enough because she <laughs> she just ran around acting like a bird dog. Tell us a little bit about her bloodline. Um, she's a crossbred. She's out of some blue ticks that I've had throughout the years and grew up hunting and uh, decided to do something a little different, bred uh, the blue tick line to a, to a walker dog named Power Trip. Okay. Uh, was, he was up in Kentucky at the time, just wanted to kind of try something a little different. And uh, she's two years old now, but the litter, it, it worked out pretty good. And I'm not real familiar with the, the walker bloodlines, but, sure. but some people have heard of him. He, he was at this hunt, I believe, at, at one point. I don't know if it was last year or the year before. But. All right. What did you do from the regional to tonight to get you here on the stage? And to be honest, uh, she's had a bum leg for the last month, so we were told advised just not to hunt her. Um, I took her out once just to see how the, the leg would hold up, and uh, that's it. We, we I didn't took, notice her limping around any of today. She, about. Hopefully she won't be, but, uh, <clears throat> but I bet tomorrow she will be, but, but we're going to try to see if she can make it on through. And But we didn't do much hunting. We kind of let her up. And laid her up and let her heal to see if she was going to get healthy. So, John, where do you fit in here? Well, <laughs> Jensen doesn't like this part of the story, but uh, I pretty much had a coon dog that wasn't doing too good, and we were partners on that, and he had this pup and one other, and I tried to convince him to let me have one, and somehow I did, and he goes, man, this dog's just a little too good for you, and he took it back pretty quick, <laughs> and... Uh, I said, well, only for half of her. So this is where we are now. So that, Yeah. So now we got to figure out how we're going to split these checks up because, <laughs> because you're getting a good check here no matter what happens next. I right. definitely stole her from him, but this is what I love to do. And I said, man, she deserves to be out there. I hear you. I hear you. Congratulations, man. I'm, I'm glad to get to interview you guys. I really like the looks of your hound. I appreciate it. Uh, we got another one or two in the wings, and uh, we'll bring them to you here shortly. All right, thank you very much, Rick. Uh, we, got a, we got them coming, so we're gonna make this quick right here with Steve and I, but uh, a couple of things. Crossbreed stands out to me and uh, knocked out the knockout dog, but it looks like, look at that scorecard, that knockout put up quite a fight. Tell us, tell us what you see there. 
Well, you know, this is a two dog shootout, like he explained, and that can be a matter of the other dogs just going the wrong direction or whatever. But uh, what impresses me is, she, uh, is the little female uh, scored on four raccoons. And uh, in these hunts and the format that we're in, usually if you if you uh, score the big part of four uh, four coons, uh, you're gonna probably advance. And uh, he did here, you know, knockout had three, looks like he may have had a tree there at the end. Didn't matter because uh, he, he was obviously struck for a quarter all the way through. And uh, the little P female was struck for 50 and 50. So just a real shootout and he come on, out on the right end of it. And uh, they had a real hunt, they scored on eight coons. What a cast, what a yeah. guide. It was a heck of a cast, and I'll tell you, that was a heck of an accomplishment because we've seen Knockout for three years in a row was a dog that we all picked to advance. So congratulations uh, to Masta and the boys from Texas did a great job tonight. And we've got another one that's advancing here, so we're about to waste no time and take it right back down to you, Rick. Let's hear from him. So we're back with another familiar face here this evening, <laughs> Jack Bingham and uh, Jersey Girl. Tell us a little bit about your hunt tonight, Jack. It was really kind of uneventful. Uh? uneventful. You know, we cut loose and uh, one dog made a slick right off the bat and she was treated in there and had a coon and that was the only coon we scored on. Wow, you did have kind of a slow we motion had, cat. Uh, well, we probably scored on six or seven dens. Them guys couldn't believe on how many dens we were scoring on. Um, then towards the end of the hunt, she had me a little worried. She got over by a road and it showed her right in the road ditch and she wasn't moving. Nobody, we hadn't heard her bark or nothing probably for 30, 40 minutes. And uh, so we were a little worried about that. But then I, we got over closer to her and I think she was in something. In a tile or in a hole in the ground possibly? I don't know what she was in, but she was messing with something she shouldn't have been. Right. <clears throat> the judge put stationary on with 15 minutes left in the hunt. So I ended up having to tree her and we got within a hundred yards of her and I knew if she was in something, she was going to boogie out of there. Yeah. And she did. Yeah. And uh, I ended up winning with 25 plus. Hey, it's, it's good. You know, it's we good had, for tonight. We had a good guide and good judge and we had a pretty good cast. What region did you come out of, Jack? La Plata. La Plata? Yeah. Okay. Did you win one round, two rounds with this dog? Or? I won on Friday night with six and a quarter. Did you re-enter on Saturday? Yep. And? Yep. I, uh, we did not, the coon quit moving because the cold front come okay. through and yep. it was pretty, sure. pretty crappy hunting on Saturday night. Sure. Uh, your co owned this female with you? With my boy and then uh, Justin Boblet, his name ain't on the papers. I keep forgetting to send them in, but he's, he's my main partner on the dog. Uh, she lives at his house most of the time. Uh, but he started a new job, got a new baby. He's not hunting too much. So I went and picked her up about a month ago, six weeks ago and got her tuned up for this. Did you guys bring out another dog? Uh, ja week? Jacob's hunting BTO. Okay. And he oh. owns BTO with uh, uh, Nick Snodgrass. All right. I put Jacob's name on all my dogs. We hunt together all the time, um, mainly to keep us from drawing each other when we go to the big hunts. Uh, like I said, me and him pleasure hunt together all the time. And if, if we get a dog back from one of our other partners that needs a little work on, it's easier for two people to sure. set them up and fix a problem. Sure, yep. And so her only problem is is that she's wanting to get wooded so if uh if the coon ain't moving she's going to find something to tree yep <laughs> lucky it was a few dents tonight i assume yeah jack congratulations on your win tonight Thanks. uh you made the top 24 and uh you got to be excited about that i mean it, it, you've been this far already last, last year, year. Yep. yeah yep with a red bone yep yeah i, I retired her okay uh, well I, she's living the good life in missouri right now i hear you so I'm hoping to get one more step further. I, it would be appreciative, wouldn't it? Yep. Hey, there's your other winner here. And we got a couple more in the wings and uh, we'll bring them up here just shortly. All right, well, second year in a row, as Rick said, that we've got to see uh, Jack advance on to the 24 here at the Tournament of Champions. Looks like it was pretty uneventful though. I mean, this uh, we've seen three or four casts in a row now come in that had a lot of action. That was pretty good. Um, what, what was the winning score here? Uh, 25 plus one the cast. You heard that he's treated in the ground. Uh, I know what that feeling is like when you know one that's not going to stay in the ground. Um, but, you know, again, she won, She treated the only coon they looked at. And uh, that advanced her through. And that's what this format uh, style is. Jack's no stranger to the winner's circle. He knows how to. And this little female is off of uh, one of the best females uh, uh, that I hunted with, Brandon Kozelman's, uh Snooky female. Um, you know, uh, he's done quite a bit of winning with her. She's five years old, 
uh, I could see her advance farther than this. Yeah, girls definitely got a good chance to, to make it on past the 24, but tonight, of course, that's what we're looking at, and we've got yet another one that's come in waiting in the wings, so we're not going to waste any time. We're going to take it right back down to you, Rick Stretch. Tell us about it. Our next cast winner this evening, he's no stranger to uh, Southern Ohio. They've been doing a little bit of winning with this dog, and uh, a lot of folks down there fear this team. And for good reason, um, with Logan Hester and Derek Mills, and the dog's name is Drinking Bone. Logan, tell us a little bit about your cast tonight. Uh, the cast went great. I come out of the truck, and I had a pretty decent advantage with the first strike. He beat her on the ground a little bit more than what I'd like to, but he ended up getting treed and having a coon there. All dogs got treed and got handled, and we called a timeout. I got recast and ended up getting advantage again and striking back in for 100 and training again and having a coon and stayed out of trouble the rest of the night. That's not his style, typically. No, usually he's a quarter strike dog. I guess I just got fortunate yeah, tonight. Yeah, and he's way in there most of the time. Yeah, he, he stayed right around us around 600, 700 yeah. yards and, and ended up getting training some coon there. So you come out of our home club up there at Mount Gilly and you won your cast both nights. I forget the scores. Uh, I think it was 425 the first night and 300 the second. Yeah. What did you do? between the regional and here tonight to get to where you're at right now? I, I'll tell you, um, we've had a lot of help getting him right in the past couple of weeks from several several great dogmen, uh, Randall Drew, Tony Bowman, uh, Doug Blackwell, and me and him has been hunting him off and on there for the past, past what, two, two and a half months. So we, we couldn't have done it without all the help we've had. Derek, what do you think about this team right here? <laughs> We're here, buddy. We've made it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're consistent. They're, they they win everywhere they go down there, around just south of home down there. And it it's great to see you up there. And I know you got a good dog. I know you guys are a good team. Uh, congratulations on your win. Thank you. We'll see you around here tomorrow afternoon. Awesome. Thanks Sounds great. So we're coming back to you guys. We'll have another one here in just a minute. All right. Thank you very much, Rick. Uh, appreciate you talking to him. And now we're going to and that's quite a scorecard. I want to hear your analysis. If I read that right, and I'm, I'm not very good at this, but looks like eight treed to the eight, plus, yeah. but 12 trees total. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. And uh, they, uh, they was, uh, they, again, they had a heck of a shootout. Um, and here's, these casts are so competitive. I mean, they, they, they had, obviously, uh, there was four really good dogs in this cast. Um, uh, to score on eight coons uh, in a four dog cast and he you know he 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 you know he he obviously strikes for 100 trees for 100 and a quarter twice gives him 450 plus uh, and that wins the cast for him two other dogs was uh, tied at 275 plus a piece another dog at 150 um, couple of them pulled minus and uh, that's really what kind of uh, you know you know one one dog uh, treat scored on three coon uh, but looks like he uh, probably had a maybe had a bad tree or, or pulled some minus, and that was really the difference yeah. on on that particular thing. So it uh, you know these hunts are hard enough to win, and uh, you know they had a heck of a shootout. And uh, this dog comes from my old uh, stomping grounds from up north. Uh, he's one of the ones that's off the Libby female that had three of them in here from uh, three different males. Uh, he's obviously a, a dog that could uh, advance quite a ways in here. So, uh, absolutely, it's uh, I don't uh, I don't see uh, I don't see uh, I don't see them not making a dent in this. Yeah, I tell you the thing that that stood out to me too. I mean, you're looking at you're looking at twelve uh, or twelve times we had a dog first to the tree. Only two of those were minuses, so we had eight that scored, two that pulled circles. Uh, and only two to the minus. So that was quite an action-packed hunt. Come out of it with 450 points of the wind. I'm sure he, he's proud. And looks like we've got another dog uh, that's already come in. So let's move right back to Rick Stretch. Rick, who do we got here now? So our next cast winners are uh, here with me now. And uh, it's National Grand Night Champion Indiana Outlaw, who is also a reserve world champion, handled by Jason Cooper. Owned by Alan Holding and Jason. and Jason Cooper. Jason, tell us a little bit about this dog once again. You know, Rick, he's uh, uh, he's just a fun dog to hunt. I know Top he end is. Strike dog, <laughs> likes to get by himself. Tonight in our cast, we had a great cast. Uh, we had a great judge, um, but right out of the truck, I drew. I had a hundred strike, and he was freed about ninety yards. 
from where we cut them up on the top of a gigantic hill. So one other dog was with them. We had a cone. And uh, then after that, we recut and dogs were getting treed through the country and leaving and taking minus. And I just kind of held back. He got down on a riverbank and kind of hammered around. Um, I don't know what he was doing there for about 40 minutes. So only outlaw knows what he was doing, <laughs> but I didn't like it. Yeah. But then he ended up getting treed there again. And we had a real weird uh, uh, thing happen in the cast. He was treed across the river. And as we were closing in on the river, gunshots. So we immediately called uh, timeout with interference going on, and I was able to see his coon. He had another coon trade. Um, we had called some time, time left then. Yeah, what do we have 50 left? Minutes. About fifty minutes left, and I think <laughs> it, when we called timeout, I was up by three fifty. Uh, the other dogs took minus, and I had two and a quarter plus. Um, one dog withdrew. We went to another spot, and we split the strike right out of the truck. Dogs were going crazy cut him loose and he flew down in there about 700 yards in about two minutes and trade and the other guys like if he's got a coon we're done we went in there he had a coon and i think they withdrew with about 35 40 minutes okay. to go so yeah. and that was that was the cast really i mean good good group of guys met some some really good people and had a great judge when did you and alan get this dog i mean it's it's been a yeah, wonderful story with you guys in this dog it'll be two years in july okay bought him from johnny watkins um yeah, it's been a great ride. He's been an awesome dog. He's had some health issues. Up at the zones last week, he was up and leading a cast by over 200 with about 15 minutes to go and gave it away. And he, he was sick. And Jeff Rickless helped us out, and we got him doctored up. And I called Al Saturday morning and said, I'm going home. And Jeff kind of talked me, you know, we did a little bit of work, and he pulled a, a cast win on Saturday night with eight and a quarter. And and look really good. I'm assuming LaGrange region. LaGrange. Okay. Yep. yep. All right. Alan, what do you think about this team right here? They, uh, they can get it done. They can get it done. If Outlaw's feeling good, he's he's a tough out. When it when it when it when you guys are at the big show, people know you're there, and uh, what a good thing that is. I congratulations, uh, Jason and Very Alan. Good, good job. Um, we'll see you guys here tomorrow night. We're down to 24. You guys got a pretty good size check in your pocket right now and open to add to it, I'm assuming. Great. Thanks to you, okay. Casey. Thank you. All right. Rick, thank you very much. Looks like Outlaw had a really good night tonight. Steve, talk, let's talk about the scorecard. Well, uh, there's not a whole lot to talk about here. Um, you heard what he said. I mean, sometimes uh, it's your night and uh, sometimes it's not. And, uh, you know, looking at wh what they have here, uh, at the time when they when the other guys quit, I guess you could say he was sitting at 425 plus. Uh, one dog was at uh, 125 minus, and two of them was at 250 minus. And that could come from, you know, looks to me like on the card, like a dog maybe had scored some plus and then give it away. And uh, it's just it, it can happen. I mean, maybe dogs not from around here, whatever it may be. But uh, he's you know he scored on uh, scored on the better part of two, and kept his nose clean, and the other ones wasn't near as fortunate. So. Uh, it makes it for, uh, it just can, it's just sometimes how it can go. Sure, no know? doubt about it. And it was a dominating performance. I mean, you know, they withdrew, but at, at that point, you're looking at, he's 450 in the positive. The next closest dog has pulled a, a negative 125. So you're looking at a 550 point <laughs> lead right there. And that's pretty dang dominant. I mean, even if you have a, a really disaster and you minus for 225 and the other dog trees in for 225 there's still a hundred point gap so right. that and, was a pretty resounding and gap. i've hunted with the outlaw dog uh i mean he obviously made the final three of the world hunt uh national grand at autumn oaks uh this dog's no he's no stranger to the winner's circle uh they've hunted him in a few other hunts you know uh done very well with him and uh you know from from the times i hunted with him uh, when this dog is on his A game, he's as good as anything in the country. Yeah. You know, yeah. He really Outlaw, is. I know a lot of people had Outlaw you know, picked as well. I'm not sure if he was in the top 10 in our pick him. I I, you know what? I, I, I do believe that now that you bring that up. I think so, too. Uh, I believe he was uh, actually in the top. He may have been in the top five. He was actually uh, he was a, he was a, a top five uh, yes. picking uh, on the Outlaw. So that's so, no surprise to any of us to see Outlaw advancing. The thing that stands out to me looking at that scorecard with you is, you know, 550-point win 
it is. And they still had time left to hunt. Yeah, with time on the clock. Yeah, with time on the clock, you know. Uh, so, you know, again, sometimes when dogs get in that zone, uh, it doesn't matter how good yours are looking. It just Sometimes you're just not going to beat them. Yeah, take you know? a peek in the book. Uh, I believe that was, what, cast seven? No, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, the cast seven there. Who did you guys have? Well, I'm interested to hear. How, how do you think? I think we both so whiffed on that one. Uh, we it. actually had both picked the eagle dog to advance in that cast. Wow. So, yeah. uh, we uh, we uh, we whiffed on that one. Uh, I'm not fair and quite as. I picked as eagle good. along with y'all too, though. Okay, I'm not so, fair okay. quite as well this year. Uh, but you know, there's still 14 casts left out. So, uh, Rick, if you overhear this, don't get your hopes up too high too quick. Uh, yeah, we got a lot left to we go. Got a lot left to go. I think we've got another dog. Do we not? That's just come in there. We uh, we, I know we got we a dog ten, on deck. We have, yeah, we have uh, we have ten casts that are back in. We got fourteen more to go. So uh, actually, we've we're got not, thirteen more to go because I believe we've got a dog on deck right now. As a matter of fact, I hate to cut you off, but I think it's time we throw it back to Rick Stretch once again. Tell us who the eleventh cast winner of the night is, Rick. And just like that, we've got another cast winner here this evening. And I will point out, I'm hearing a little bit of noise upstairs here from uh, Steve and uh, J. Paul about the picks. This is one of two of the dogs that I thought might win this hunt tonight. Um, Casey, tell us a little bit about you and Lacey's hunt tonight. Oh, we had a good hunt. You know, we drew several good guys, went to a good spot, and Lacey done what she had to to pull off the win. How many coons did you guys score on? Oh, uh, I think we scored on five. Yeah, I think we scored on five, and Lacey treed two of them. So you drove a little ways away from here to, to hunt tonight? Yeah, about 40 minutes over around North Salem. The train? Uh, according to where I live, it's flat. Yeah. Okay. Good hunting. Yeah. All right. Uh, what region did you come out of? Uh, Lancaster. Lancaster. You have one cast win or two? Double cast win. Double cast. You won, now that I'm remembering, you won the... You, you were high-scoring dog at the regional. Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. Combined yep. score, yep. Um, and her bloodline? She's off of uh, World Champion Willie, and her mommy's off Trick Magic. Okay. And Willie had, I think, maybe six pups here, think, or six young dogs out of Yeah, yeah. He was, he was the only dog that had that many pups here, I believe. Yep. Um, what else have you won with this dog? Man, she's been good to us. You know, a lot she of people. She has been good to you. A lot of people ask about her winning this, that, and the other. You know, she don't owe me a thing. She. I don't care if she wins another cast, she's just a pleasure for us, but she won the Super Stakes twice, and she got about 90000 won in PKC. Uh, lifetime, about 130000 She's a Grand Knight champion and almost a bench show champion. One thing I notice about her is she can kind of be passed around a little bit. You're not the only one handling her just a few of these bigger wins. Yeah, um, it, well, mainly it's me and uh, Eric Pite, you know. She's a, I don't know, she's a more of a one or two do or two person or for as far as a uh, hunter you know she's kind of odd about that but how old uh, is she she just turned well she turned four in january okay yep so she's out of all her pup hunts and things yeah. like that yeah she just finished up her super stakes last fall all right what did you do in preparation from the regional to here uh i got the coon our coon hunter that's mainly it you know um she's kind of dog once you get her in shape you know you ain't got to wear her down to hunt her a couple nights a week and she's uh she's good to go so she's owned by Jack? Yep, that's Jack's my uncle. Uh, and you you three have made a wonderful team with this dog. Yeah, she's been good to us. Yeah. Yep. Well, you're in the top 24. You got a pretty good size check in your pocket right yeah, now. Yeah, I appreciate it. For what it. you've done, and, uh, but you're wanting some more, no doubt. Oh, yeah. Hopefully we can keep riding this thing out. We'll All see right. how it goes. Casey, good, good luck to you, and Thank congratulations you. Appreciate again. Appreciate it. And there you have it, another pick that I had right. Well, as much as I hate to admit it, we got to give Rick credit because he did pick Casey and Lacey, and they had a, a really good night tonight. Came in, I believe, with 200 points over the second place dog Jane in that uh, in that cast. And tell us a little bit about you know Jane and Ka Jane and Lacey both because that's a pretty interesting scorecard if you ask me, not knowing a whole lot about it. Can you can you elaborate a little bit for us, Steve? Absolutely. Unfortunately for Rick in this spot, since he threw it back to me there, uh, I picked her too, Rick. So, uh, 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 no, I tell you, the Lacey female, obviously she's, uh, uh, you know, she scored on the better part of two coons uh, tonight, that one up four. The Jane female looks to me like on the very first drop, um, pulled some minus. 
uh, ends up actually scoring on three. They, the cast scored on six, actually ends up scoring on three after that. But, yeah. you know, the minus was just too much to overcome. And that's you what know? I was talking about. You, you guys, you can't see the scorecard, but Jane dug herself a heck of a hole. At one point, she was, what, 275 to the negative? Yeah. And came back, made a 400-point change. Well, well, come back, scored, yeah, you know, to be scored plus on three. But, you know, on for me, uh, when that happens, uh, and especially when you're hunting against good dogs, it's really hard to uh, it's really hard to uh, make a comeback from that uh, from that deep because uh, on the on the side of trying to come back on it and then also on the side of if I got a lead uh, and a dog is that deep I'm not going to get jumpy I'm not going to you know I'm, when mine trees I'm going to let it settle in uh, because you know I have a, you have a lot more leeway on that so. Digging that hole right out of the gate like that, it's extremely tough to, to come back from something like that, and uh, especially against the caliber dogs that we're hunting. Uh, yeah, today. and at that point, too, you're running against the clock, and it just, you know, it finally proved to be just a, a little bit much. But congratulations to Casey and Lacey. They did really good. I believe we've got uh, another cast winner that we're about to, might not be quite ready yet, but they're starting to come in pretty fast and furious, aren't they, Steve? Yeah, they are. And it's about that time of the night where a lot of them will come in. You know, uh, hopefully tonight uh, uh, it rolls right through it. Uh, if not, we have some pretty interesting uh, things that we're going to bring you guys uh, to, uh, you know, till that final cast comes in. Uh, but I know we have another cast in. We're just trying to uh, wait for them to get set up down there. So that, that's going to bring us to the halfway point. And, uh, our next you know, dog will. Yeah, our next dog will. And judging by the time, you know, it's 1 o'clock. So, again, a big testament to the guides on bringing them in, you know, yes, keeping them here and, and bringing them in. So absolutely. Well, while we're waiting on them, uh, got a couple that have come in. We're just waiting for them to get set up with rig down there. Let's take a look at some stats. One of the stats that I'd be interested to see is I don't think we've covered the breakdown by breed, have we? I don't think so. And you because know, we've seen a crossbreed and a blue tick come in. This event has been dominated, uh, as far as entries go, by the treeing walker. What, what are the percentage? What's the breakdown look like? Um, well, there's, um, there was actually, out of the 96, there was uh, 45 uh, tree and walker males and 31 tree and walker females. So that makes a total of 76 of the 96. Wow. Uh, are, are uh, predominantly walkers. And so being a uh, blue tick fancier myself, uh, you, know, you know, I guess they would consider them off-colored dogs. That's kind of the, the term that we use in the, the hunting world. Um, you know, when, when one of them like that advances, uh, it is it is something that's usually pretty special because, you know, it, there's no doubt. That, I mean, I mean, you got to give credit where credit is due. Uh, the tree and walker breed has done a phenomenal job over the years on um you know with genetics and 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 with what they've done uh with these dogs and uh it's my hope and and we work on it constantly uh it's my hope that uh some of the other breeds uh follow uh the follow what the tree and walker breed does you know they one thing that i will what i will say in in this conversation is when they get a dominant reproducer uh the tree and walkers uh they they support that, and that's what it takes to have a good breeding program. You know, dominant reproducers don't come along very often. No. And when they do, um, everybody that has a good female, uh, that's usually that commonly will reproduce or whatever, they're going to breed it to that dominant reproducer. And uh, what happens is, is you definitely intensify the odds of having great stock that comes out of that. And uh, they tend to they tend to put jealousy, I guess you could say, as per sure. to say, aside, because they're going out there to to try to to try to produce and create uh, the best uh, dog out there. Yeah. And yeah. so they've done a great job with it, and that's why the numbers are uh, like they are. So uh, you know, there's um, uh, there's uh, I believe there's seven seven uh, English uh, that was in this cast, seven blue ticks, three black and tans. Uh, there's no red bones that made it here. Two X bred, uh, or three. No X American bred. leopard hounds in uh, it. This year. No American leopard hounds in it either. So uh, that's kind of the breakdown uh, statistically. Um, we've got another one coming in here too. So let's. Uh, hate to cut you off. Oh there, no, absolutely. I, I think we've got another dog let's find on deck. Out who our next winner is. This brings us to the halfway mark. So Rick, who takes us to the halfway point? Our next cast winner is no uh, stranger to the winter circle. 
We got Sean Burden here, and he's hunting Scream. And uh, this was Cast Six, and Cast Six was kind of the buzz talk uh, cast this evening. A um, lot of good, a lot of good hounds, a lot of good handlers in that cast right there. Sean, tell us a little bit about your hunt this evening. Uh, we had a pretty decent hunt. Uh, start out, we had a uh, circle tree off the dit yo. Uh, three of us served together. Mine come in. Well, she tree for second, served seventy five. Uh, then we ended up. Uh, Cut back off that one dog, wasn't there, took a stripe minus. And uh, anyways, I got through the country, had a big den in her, trailed up. I figured she'd had a coon, but like I said, that in her had a big den. Uh, I cut off of that. Then uh, Crash was treated through the country the other way, and we was going to him, and she come treated again about the opposite way. And uh, I went to her, and uh, the other boy went to his dog. We had three splits, and uh, uh, all three of us had coons. And uh, like I say, time they got to me, I think I had like six and a half minutes left in the hunt. Time they got back to me, and I had a coon there, which I was dead beat at this time by 25. And uh, cut off of that, I had, a, I had like say six and a half minutes. And uh, she fell in there about 900 there, and she just, when she struck, she treed right there, just ambushed a coon more or less. And uh, that pulled it out for me. She had a double there, and that, that pulled out the cast wind for me. So, but anyways, gave me, uh, gave me 300 plus. So, but anyways, I was tickled with her she participated doing for me and all that yeah, a lot of action in that cast quite a bit yeah we, yeah, we as was, we expected yeah we we was i felt like I had a pretty tough cast you know yeah it was a tough yes, cast yeah, it sure was cast, yes um the owners uh this is a yolder and burden uh which i raised her here at the house and everything she's out of uh my Coney valley pike dog and which on her bottom side is a line of dogs that we've had for years and years back before i started my dad and stuff when i was a kid and things go back to a lot of stuff uh uh, comb a breath, thrasher breeding and all that lipper. Then uh, uh, she had some more dogs right there local around the house that we bred into dogs and things through the years. And just, uh, I raised her there at the house. I had her mom and raised her. And uh, I told uh, I told Bob and them when she was about, uh, she's probably about 12, uh, probably about 12 weeks old or somewhere right in there. I told them, I said, I believe she's the one of the bunch to keep. I said, I believe she'll be a winner. And uh, which I had a male pup picked out I was going to keep. Then when they got up about six, seven months old, I went to hunting them. The male pup ended up stayed at the house, and I got carrying her. So, but uh, so what other things have you won with this one here? Uh, just come off from a win at the Super States the, uh, last week at the Junior Super States, and uh, uh, like I say, it's pretty tickled with it. Then uh, like I say, I won a pro sport hunt or two with her there. Then uh, like I say, just final fours, PKC pro class. It's another thing like so that. So the number of dollars that she's put. Putting somebody's uh, account here? Yeah, she's got, uh, I think, around 77, 78,000 in wow. PKC earnings. And I don't know what she got pro sports. She's got, I don't know, just 10,000 somewhere up in our And we're adding to it this weekend. And we're adding a little bit to it with the UKC this week. Yeah, yeah great, yeah, so, great, great, great. So she's winning it in any registry, it seems like she, you're putting her in. Yeah, like say, uh, I think she needs one win to be a Grand Night champion, stuff, all that. So, okay. Uh, but like I say, she's done good for me. Been happy with her and everything. So, Congratulations right, on thanks. surviving that cast, and uh, good luck to you the rest of the weekend. Uh, thank you. We'll need it. We'll need it. So, anyways. So, there you have it. Another one of our winners. All right. Thank you very much, Rick Stretch. So, Steve Burkholder, tell us about that scorecard that, right there right quick, because we've got a couple more that have come right in. Well, I, we, uh, this cast definitely had a lot of buzz tonight. Uh, this was a very tough cast. I mean, there was uh, these, any of these dogs uh, was capable of winning this cast. Um, I kind of felt like, uh, and I shared it with someone earlier, I kind of felt like uh, the winner of this cast uh, is going to probably be one of your uh, top three. Um, and uh, and I still believe that. I mean, the dog is capable. Uh, you know, I felt like whoever won this cast could very easily be in the top three of the of the be hunting Saturday night for the for the money. And One you thing know, obviously, this little female, you heard what he said. Uh, she's not very old. She just won the two year old Super Stakes. Uh, she's obviously a seventy thousand plus winner there. Eighty some thousand adding to it. Uh, and let me tell you something about them burdens. Uh, they know how to get one right. They know how to keep one right. And they know how to win the big ones. And uh, why? Because they put the preparation work in uh, before they get here. And uh, Sean, I've drew him out uh, uh, different times over the years. Uh, great guy to hunt with. And uh, he's obviously packing a dog good enough to win. Yep. No no doubt about it. I, I, that was cast six, cast six there. And you'd said earlier that that was one to, to watch. Uh, we're going to be watching them a whole lot more, I think. So with that, it brings us to our halfway point. We've now had 12 move on to the final 24, and we're about to find out who lucky 13 is as we go back to Rick Stretch. Rick? Win one round. One. Oh. So here we are with our uh, next cast winner.
And uh, we got a father and son team here, and uh, it's always good to see something like that. James, uh, tell us a little bit about your dog and how your hunt went tonight. Uh, she is a three-year-old female, um, just an average dog. She's a cast contender in just about every cast she's in. Uh, tonight we caught a couple good breaks that went in our favor, uh, and when we wound up trimming two coons. Scored on two? Did, did you? Did the other dog score on any coons? Tonight? Yeah, um, every dog scored on one coon, and then we scored on two. Okay. What kind of terrain were you in tonight? We were in the hills. In the hills. A lot of guys in the hills. Not, not biggins, but we were in some good ones. I, I've always said that you got a 50-50 chance here in flat land or hills, and everybody's been in the hills tonight. Yeah, which we, we come from the hills, so and we're right kind kind of used to it. So, okay. yeah, it played right into her what, kind uh, of terrain. What region did you come from? Region one out of La Plata, Missouri. Okay, and you did what out there? One round winner, two. Yeah, round we round? won. We won our cast on Friday night, and what kind of score? Five hundred plus. Okay, and then we didn't have no luck Saturday. So. All right, and this is your boy Braxton. That's my boy Braxton. Let's hand the mic to Braxton. Let's see what he's got to say. What can you tell us about it, Braxton? Well, How's it feel to be here? Feels good. I made it the first year they had it, and I'm glad to see him up here giving him a little bit of my luck. I hear you. So what dog did you hunt the first year you were here? My Neosha River Queen Bee female. Okay. Did you have any luck at all that year? Or? I made it up here and I got beat the first night. Okay. All right. How Six, old are you? 14. 14. So you would have been 12? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he was the youngest. He's the youngest one, but he is the cast. He was the cast that went into sudden death in overtime at 500 plus. That, okay. That up here that night. All right. Yep, I remember that. That. Was, that was his cast. Okay, all right. So, so what about her? She got a she got a chance here. Or? That's hope. Yeah, yeah. Well, you guys have got a pretty good check right now. But now, how will we split this up? If we, what what are we doing for the uh, for the funds here? What, how are we splitting that up between you guys? There ain't no tell. He'll probably get it all. Some way, somehow, he'll get it. <laughs> no doubt. No tell. Hey, congratulations Thank on your victory, man, and good luck throughout the weekend. Thank you. Thank you. There you having another winner and father and son team. It's always great to chat with guys like this. Come on, baby. Thank you very much, Rick, and it is. I'll tell you what, I remember Braxton from a couple of years ago here. I mean, the young man was so excited, and what really impressed me was how polite and respectful he was and happy to be here. Really glad to see Braxton and his dad back and advancing. Uh, you know, he got wiped out in that in that tw first round the last time around, but they're making it to the final 24. And uh, I wouldn't doubt if, if he's like any of my kids, he's probably going to wind up with all the money, that's for yeah. sure. They I, tend to do that somehow. <laughs> I guarantee it. One of the things that, that stood out to me looking at this scorecard was they had a really, really tough dog to beat that we all picked, I believe, to, to move forward. Tell us about that. Well, they uh, actually had two tough dogs. They had the, uh, the Stevenson's Willow female. Uh, has been here three years in a row. Uh, in the cast, and they also had a dog uh, by the name of Loose Change that Stephen Smith was hunting. Both dogs very capable of winning this whole thing. And, uh, you know, she got out and um, scored on two, two raccoons, and uh, that was the deciding factor. Um, and, uh, you know, Change scored on one and, uh, you know, kept her nose clean, made a, you know, made a circle tree. And uh, excited for him. I tell you, uh, it's 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 exciting to see that to, to Rick's point and to yours, uh, father and son team. He was here a couple years ago, and now to see him back here advancing one more round is pretty awesome. Hey Amen. Well, congratulations. Glad to see Braxton moving on. And speaking of moving on. We've had a couple more, so we're going to probably pick up the pace here quite a bit. Uh, Rick, take us on through this pretty quickly. Let's find out who the next one is. And I'm back here with another one of our winners, and this is Trigger with Jason Himes. Jason, tell me a little bit about your cast this evening. Well, we turn loose, uh, Trigger double circles back to us, falls over right-handed, falls three to 120 yards. We go over and he has a cone. I recut him off it. The other two dogs get in there and split tree. We go in there to score their tree. While we're shining their tree, I tree him in again. The two dogs are slick. We go to his tree. He's got a cone. And I get him off it and I recut him. I'm down the holler and he strikes again. And then two more dogs put in with him. He trees another one and go in there. There's three dogs on that tree. He got first tree and he has another cone. 
But then I get him off that and we cut him across the creek. And he goes over and strikes the old track that I was worried about not being on the outside and stayed treed for about 30 minutes. I wasn't going to treat him in and Dominator treat in and Rock treat in. So we went and scored theirs and Dominator put me in a position where I, I had, we started a stationary on him and there was about 20 minutes left in the hunt. So I had to treat him in. Right. And we went over there and he had him a fourth cone. Wow. And that's the he way was getting it, it done tonight. Yeah. They said they said he was putting on a clinic. I heard that. Yeah. I heard that. He what? had me smiling. <laughs> <laughs> and still smiling. Yeah, still smiling. What region did you come out of, Jason? Uh, the Dix River, Kentucky. Okay. I don't know what region it is. Yeah. Um, so what did you do down there? Did you win one round, two rounds, what doubled up. Doubled up. Yeah. What kind of scores did you have? Um have a few yeah, coons, and you score on a couple of coons each night or something? Yeah, uh, 375 the second night, uh, 175 the first night. Okay, so yeah. you've won three rounds in a row here. Yeah. What have you done since the region to get to here? Uh, I've hunted every night. You've hunted him every night? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, you've got a co-owner with this dog. My daughter. And? Well, the story with that? Uh, I, wouldn't even have, I wouldn't even have the dog if it wasn't for my daughter. She... Uh, we won up Walker days in 21, and she got to wanting to get into coon hunting. So she said, Daddy, I want a dog. So I found him and traveled to Tennessee to get him. Then after we get him, she gets to date and quits hunting, and I lay him up. Now you're and stuck with the dog. Now I'm stuck with and the dog. And here you are yeah. in the top 24 of the Tournament of Champions. Yeah. Come I'm, hire selling him back in November for quite a bit of money, but I'm glad I didn't now. Yeah. 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 Uh, what's his bloodline? Uh, Willie and uh, ZZ Top, Whitey Marshall, C. Mill. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, congratulations on your victory, man. All right. Thank good you, seeing you back up here. All right. Appreciate it, buddy. All, All right. right. Good night. I don't see any in the wings, so we're going to take a break here, and we'll be back to you live here shortly. Thank All you. right, Rick, thank you very much. Uh, we got a couple scorecards here. So, Rick, I can tell you, there are going to be a couple coming to you pretty doggone fast because we've got a couple of cards after that. But right now, it's Jason's. Uh, moment. Let, let's talk a little bit about the scorecard here. It, it looks like we had two dogs that had a lot of plus points out there. It was a real dog fight, uh, pardon the pun. Tell us about that, Steve. Well, as you can see, uh, it was a real good cast. I mean, a very tough cast. Uh, he obviously drew the Dominator dog out, Joe Manning. Uh, dog was looking good. And uh, he, uh, um, you could hear that uh, his dog had gotten treed. And I wasn't going to tree him, uh, but when you're hunting against good ones, Dominator scored on a coon and I put him in a position now where he's got to and, uh, and trees him and walks in there and he gets, he trees four raccoons. And uh, in Greencastle, Indiana, if you can tree four raccoons, score on four, uh, scorable trees like that. Uh, it's normally going to equal success. <laughs> and uh, it obviously did this. And hey, uh, kudos to Jason there. I know this is not his only entry. He has another dog uh, that's hunting in here. So he, had, so he had multiple dogs in this. And uh, you know, uh, again, uh, what stood out to me is he asked him what he did to prepare him to get him uh, to hunt here. And he, and, he, and he worked on him every day. Yeah, honey. You know, so uh, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty, uh, pretty incredible. Uh, and just to hear that story, you know, uh, these dogs, these dogs tie t tie into uh, some pretty neat. You know, we had a father and son, and now his daughter. Uh, was Cadence, to get I believe, is his yeah, daughter's yeah, name yeah, is Cadence. So, pretty Hopefully awesome. She's watching, even though pretty she's awesome. And I can now. tell you this. Uh, he scored on four tonight. I would say he's going to be a contender the rest of the weekend. Yeah, definitely. That's going to be a dog to watch and uh, really, really happy for Jason and moving on. And now we've got another one. So let's take it down to Mr. Rick Stretch. Rick, tell us who we got here on deck. Back with another cast winner. And if anybody's following Coonhounds, they've been following this one here and, and win after win after win and the young man hunting him as well. I'm standing here with Casey Stallard, and he's handling little Joe tonight. Casey, tell us a little bit about your cast this evening. Uh, I go, he goes by set him up, Joe. All right, that, that's well, enough yeah, right yeah, there. We'll set him up. <laughs> set him up, Joe? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> treat a couple coons, stay out of trouble. How far did he go tonight? I think he was about 700 on the first one, and .62, and he was way in there after before the hunt they couldn't win when you got him he's always way in there sometimes sometimes yeah so he's getting um, old. so you guys brought three dogs here this weekend your yes. dad and cody yep. as well yeah 
Um, and you guys come out of the Mount Gilead yep. zone up yep. there. Um, so you won, if I remember right, you won one round? Yeah. On Saturday night? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, got beat Friday. What kind of score did you have then? I had uh, 800 Saturday, treat four coons. Okay. Looked real good. Had that lucky three dog. And uh, Friday, he looked awesome. I, he treed three coons. Uh, dogs that beat me, treed one by herself, but, you know, ended up she beat me. He looked really good, though, just got beat. And uh, How old is he now? He'll be nine in May. What's his lifetime earnings <sighs> now that we're adding to it? Uh, Any idea? He's over 100,000 with stuff, but, I mean. What uh, was he off of? He's off of Neosha River Cuz, and couldn't tell you on the bottom. I don't pay mm. much attention. Yeah. Just cut him. Dad hunt, dad hunts him, you know, I hunted the old dog, but he's been doing all the work with him and got Randall with me, Drew, he's been with us all the way with him and Rick Marshall, I'm just... So he's a stoward Marshall, Drew. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And uh, he's been with us for a long time and... How long? Eight years. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, them guys did all the work with him and... I guess they so any one hard. of the three of you that come down and probably a couple more can handle him. Oh what yeah. Are, what are we? Are we sticking with the same plan we got here tonight? Or I would, we? I'd say if Dad gets beat, I'd like for him to hunt him, but I'm yeah. sure he'll be on. He knows him better than me, probably. Yeah. Well, congratulations, you, man. Sir. We're not surprised. <laughs> yeah, I am. There's a winner right there. <laughs> Good luck to you the rest Thank of the weekend. Daddy's proud of him. He's hunting another dog tonight. And Joe is a dog that uh, I think we'd all, I know I picked Joe, uh, not knowing a whole lot, but that dog's been around for a while and looks like he had a good night. Take a look at the scorecard and analyze it for us, please, Steve. Well, uh, like he said, um, he got he got the better part of two, you know, he got the better part of two trees. Uh, there was a couple other dogs in the cast or one other dog in the cast that had uh, uh, scored on a couple and uh, put a little bit of minus and kind of put himself out of the game. Uh, you know, obviously drew a tough cast. And uh, I've hunted with the Joe dog. And uh, uh, honestly, I, I was telling someone earlier, uh, Joe's my sentimental pick to win this whole thing. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but um, uh, Casey, uh, I want to give a shout out to him for being here and hunting tonight. Uh, I know when he got up this morning, and uh, come here to hunt. He didn't feel like leaving home to come hunt here. Um, a dog that he had actually hunted for a lot of years was was probably his best friend. Uh, they had to bury him this morning. And uh, I know, I know, uh, uh, Casey. I know it was tough for you, but I just want to give a shout out to you to come down and hunt this hunt. Um, you know, uh, if I got a sentimental favorite to win this hunt, it's this one. Uh, they, uh, Casey and, and, and his dad, Jeff, and his brother, Cody, uh, they're coon hunters. I mean, they, they lay out, they know what it takes uh, to come to these hunts and win. Uh, I know it wasn't easy for you, Casey, uh, but I want to give you props. And I can tell you I'm pulling for you and Joe uh, to go a long ways in this thing, if not win it. So, uh, you know, uh, the Joe dog's capable. Uh, he's a coon treer. And uh, them coon treers are tough to beat. Yes, sir. And uh, I can guarantee you he's ready, and he's got a good handler on him oh. and a good kid. No doubt. You know, good you heard friend. Casey say that his dad gets eliminated. You know, his dad probably knows Joe even better. And wants to, to, you know, he's welcome to take him over. It wouldn't surprise me to see Casey and Joe continue on pretty doggone deep, if not all the way to the end of this thing. And, again, we really – uh, Casey, I know it's tough, man. They just don't live long enough, brother, I promise you. But congratulations tonight. We're proud to see you here. And now we're fixing to take it back down to Rick's stretch because we've got another dog on deck. Rick, who do we have here moving on? 15th dog, I believe, to advance. Another one of my picks is standing here on the bench this evening. And uh, it's old Breeze. And I hunted with Breeze. I guided her at, a, at uh, mm, the local hunter club up there about no, oh, three months ago, Zach, probably three, Something four like months that. ago. Yep. And she put on a coon tree and clinic. Right now. <laughs> I think she had three off to herself. And uh, so Zach Earls is the handler. And we got Darian Dillon here with him. Zach, tell us a little bit about how your hunt went tonight. I uh, started off slow. The dogs got in uh, two holes. And uh, once we got them out of that, uh, they got in there about 600. And Two dogs was on empty. She was about 20 yards away, had a coon, and that's all she needed to do for the cast win. So scored on one coon. Scored one what coon. What kind of terrain were you in? 
Uh, mountains. 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 I hear you. Yep. Um, what did you do? You qualified out of the Mount Gilead zone. Mount Gilead Friday night, uh, six seventy five, I believe we had. And no, and didn't win your cast on Saturday. No, sir. A little bit of bad luck, or yeah, it was bad cast. It's dead cast. Yeah. Yep. Okay. What have you done since Mount Gilead to here to get well, where you're at? I had a I had a new son born yesterday, and I'm here tonight hunting. So we're had a had a baby yesterday and baby you're here yesterday. tonight yes sir you can't be that well liked at home for something to pull <laughs> so, that off she so gave me the permission slip so i didn't here. bring her with you <laughs> no she, she had to stay a few days so but all's good and we just i don't know we just coon up that's all we do so. what's the bloodline uh, breeze is out of ron jackson's uh, blue creek oh. get hooked dog from lisbon ohio and a friend of mine's female in trying north carolina her name's uh white oak creek Jacked up June from owned by Matt Lanford. So Darren, you're the owner. Yes. How did you come to get her? I bought her from Matt, my buddy in in uh, North Carolina. He came picked me up. He drove up to uh, uh, Ron Jackson's house, and I rode with him when he bred his female, and uh, drove down there and bought a pup. And and you guys have trained her together. Yeah, Zach and I has worked with her since a pup. Okay. And how old is she again? She's three. Three. Okay. Well, you made it this far. You've got a pretty good size check already. But I know you guys can go farther because I've seen her in action. We're swinging for Saturday. I so. hear you. I hear you. Congratulations on your victory tonight. Thank you. Appreciate Darren, it. congratulations Thank you. to you. Thank you. There you have it. A nice blue tick female, fellas. All right. Got Thank you very much, Rick. We appreciate that. I'll tell you, I hadn't even looked at the scorecard. I was too busy listening to him. The thing that stand, stands out to me is he must be. I have three children, and i got to tell you, uh, you know, my wife, uh, I always respected. She let me do what I wanted to do, but I don't know how proud she would have been at me laying out all night the night after she had a baby. <laughs> well, you know, the TOC comes around uh, uh, once a year, and, uh, you know, not, not saying that, uh, you know, obviously they have an, uh, uh, an arrangement made uh, that worked, worked out for them. But, uh, you know, looking at this cast and like he shared, uh, they scored on one. Uh, he was able to get, you know, he was able to get the biggest piece of it and uh, overcome a little bit of minus that he had. And, uh, and it advanced him to uh, it advanced him to the uh, you know to the next round and uh, you know Rick Rick did share with me earlier tonight he definitely did pick her he said I've seen her in action and uh, you know they may have only scored one tonight but she got through with a single cast win in an Ohio zone where you got to score on multiple ones uh, to get through and she obviously did that so uh, you know she's a three-year-old female uh, she's obviously a blue tick Yep. You know, and, uh, you know, looking at percentage. You're breed. I think, I, yeah. I you got to love that. Steve. Well, I think there's seven of them that come here, and there's two of them that advance out of that. Yeah. So, you know, we're getting we're getting close to 50%. And uh, not something the tree and walker breed is going to be able to tout after tonight. So, yeah. no, I'm just picking, you know. Uh, we could be, you know, like the red bone breed, like Rick. And, uh, you know, if he would have made it, he'd have been the only one. So, but you know what? I'm just, it's all in good fun. It, uh, it, it's tough to get here uh, of any breed, really. Oh, no, it is. You know, we love to give Rick a hard time, just like he loves to give us a hard time. But I, I do like seeing the other dogs advance. And, you know, we're, we're making light of the fact that his wife had a baby yesterday. But you, you just nailed it, you know. Uh, this is a this is a deal that you know you've got to make a commitment to, and I guarantee you he's got a lot of support, and she's got to be very very happy for him moving forward tonight. You know, I can tell you, when you're a hunter, a whole lot of it is about having somebody at home that also supports. I'll tell you, I hate to admit this, Steve, but actually, uh, my wife and I, our anniversary, uh, we set our wedding where it would be after duck season, and our first child. She uh, let the doctor induce labor two days early because it was due on opening day of dove season, and she knew I was going to be in the dove field no matter what. So <laughs> I can't make too much fun of it. Absolutely, him, and and you know, advancing through this first round, it's a thirty-five hundred dollar check. Oh, uh, and I, you know, I, Mama likes that. You, I can guarantee you, it can come in handy at a time a, a, like amen this. So with a new mouth to that's feed. what makes the TOC awesome too. So well, to congratulate him again on two things: both winning the cast and, and being a new, a new and daddy. And, being a new dad, and we've got another cast winner. So let's send it over to our buddy Rick Stretch. Rick, tell us who we got now. Haley. 
All right, Rick. Yeah, we're back to us, but we're going to take it back right back to Rick. I think we've had a little bit of audio difficulty. He didn't realize that, that we were coming to him. Uh, I will tell you that right now, uh, this is number 17. Uh, our last dog put us two-thirds of the way through. We have uh, officially, at that point, had 16, now 17. So 17 is standing up on deck. We're going to go back as soon as we can establish communication with Rick again. And we've got seven to go. So uh, let's find out who our 17th cast winner is. Let's take it back once again to our colleague, Mr. Rick Stretch. And we're back again with another cast winner this evening. It's Cody Shockley and Boomer. Cody, tell us a little bit about your cast this evening and how things went down. It went really good. We had a good cast of guys, uh, good guide, good judge. Everything went really good. We was in plenty of coons. How many coons did you guys score on tonight? I believe we scored on six altogether. So you had a lot of action. Oh, yeah. It, we never stopped walking much. Uh, and how many times did you handle Boomer under a coon tonight? Three times. Three times. And that was good enough for the win? Was, was it close? Was it? It was kind of close at the end because another dog was treed, and I, I got him treed in, and... Uh, he had another coon, so that was the end of it. What kind of terrain out. were you guys hunting in tonight? Pretty good. A few little hills here and there, but most of it was pretty flat and woody. And the coons were moving? They seemed to be treeing them every four or 500 yards yeah. and splitting them up, so it went good. I mean, it was in a good place. You come out of the Mount Gilead zone. Yeah. And uh, you guided up there as well. Did you win one round or two rounds up there? I won both rounds. Won both rounds? What, yeah. You remember what kind of scores you had up there? Just one coon each night, 225. One, okay. All right. What have you done since you've left the region and to get to where you're at now? As far as preparing? Yeah. I hunted him one night since then. <laughs> That's the truth. I took him out one we night. We don't recommend that to the folks at home. but <laughs> Yeah, I don't recommend that. I've been working a lot, but I honestly only took him out one night. We treat a few coons. And How old is he? He'll be coming four. He's still three. And his bloodline? Um, well, he's out of Holbrook's, Holbrook's Fast Freddy on the top side, which is uh, out of Main Street Dino. Okay. And he's out of Bryant's Buckeye Dottie on the bottom, which then goes on back to some hard time, like hard time buck on the bottom side. All right. Um, so you've won one round here. You've got a pretty sizable check in your pocket right now, <laughs> but you're looking for more. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're, going for, we're going for the end. Are you going to, since you haven't been hunting him at all, are you going to turn him loose on the way back to the motel? Or are you nah, just gonna... he don't need too much practice. We just got to keep him rested up. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Cody, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank Wish you. you the best of luck for the rest of the weekend. And there you have it, another one that we uh, salute. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Rick, and congratulations to Cody and Boomer. I've had the privilege of talking to Cody at a couple of these events. What a super nice young man. And I'll tell you, this wasn't an easy feat. This cast, uh, we had you know, pretty strong ones. It was a tight race to the end. Tell us what you see on the scorecard there, Steve. Well, they scored on six, and uh, like he shared, um, his treed three of them. Uh, that's usually, uh, you know, usually uh, that's a recipe for a win. But I will tell you this, you know, he was struck for a quarter on all three of them. So, uh, you know, there's a dog that had two and a quarter and a dog that had 200 and a quarter, dog that had 150. Uh, so the last one that he scored on is really what kind of, you know, kind of what put him over the, uh, kind, of, kind of sealed the deal for him. And, uh, but, you know, they had a real hunt. I mean, scoring on, on six like that, you know, and it sounded like they had a great cast. And, uh, you know, it's fun having a good hunt and a great cast like that, especially if you come out the winter, there's no doubt about it. But, you know, I, uh, I know that Scott and Ed Bates was in this cast with a little female they've been doing a lot of winning with, with the Dixie female. Uh, she's not an easy out. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about the other two uh, dogs that was in the cast. Uh, but I know that he had some good, he had some tough competition. All the dogs, you know, oh, yeah. all the dogs are tough here sure. uh, this weekend. So, uh, absolutely excited for him. And hey, you know, sometimes it's just their night to shine. Yeah. And tonight was his. Oh, no doubt. It was her night to shine. And, you know, I, I, I think you had picked the Dixie dog in this, uh, in this group. I had picked the girl dog, I believe. Rick had, had also picked the Dixie dog. Uh, in there, so none of us got this one right. But once again, we saw another uh, breed advance in English in, in this case, or red tickets we used to call them back home. So you know, we're looking 17 dogs in now. Four of them are not treeing walkers. So that definitely is is going a little bit against the grain on the number of entries that we had. 76 out of 96 treeing walkers for 80% of the field. You know, now we're looking at a. a 
about a quarter of it, so they're you know, gaining a little bit on the pack there, I would say. But you know, the thing is, we've had some really, really good dogs. It doesn't matter what breed we're talking about. You know, it takes a special animal to make it here. I think you would definitely agree you've been here yourself. Absolutely. And uh, it takes a good dog and it takes some luck. You know, you got to have some luck roll your way. You know, uh, John talked about it a little bit earlier tonight. Um, you know, sometimes you, it's a simple thing as, you know, you tree one in a den that you don't get to score on. And that may not be the ultimately that thing that beats you, but what happens is, is when you're competing in these hunts, when you don't get to score that 200, you're now in a come from behind situation versus a in the game situation. And so it forces you to make calls a little bit differently, a little bit quicker, you know, as versus, and it can be, you know, that, you know, just as simple as a, you know, the coon being in a den, a circle tree. So that's what makes it so tough. I mean, and that's where the break, that's where the break side of it come in. Sometimes it's simple as, um, we've seen it earlier tonight, uh, where it's simply the first set of strike points. Dog gets struck for 50, dog gets struck for a quarter. And a dog that gets struck for 50 advances, you know. So sometimes it can be that. Yeah, and, and you know, speaking of strike points, I mean, looking at Cody here with Boomer, I mean, you're talking about a dog that had 25 strike points three times. Three times all the way through. But overcame that. Because when he does, you know, get on game, if he trees, yeah. pretty good chance that you're going to find, find and, game there. Yeah, and you could hear that he won his cast. I, I would say the dog's not predominantly a quarter strike dog because he won his cast both nights at the zones, two and a quarter apiece. So one would have to think that, you know, he had 100, 100 and a quarter, uh, logically thinking on that, on that side of it. But, uh, you know, he doubled up there. He obviously comes out and draws a tough cast. He gets through this round. Hey. He could be another one of them dark horses that comes through there. And, uh, you know, the dog's obviously a Grand Knight champion twice, so you can't really call that a dark horse yeah. uh, when, they've, when, they've got their, when they've got their Grand Knight title twice. At know. only three years old, too. That yeah. sounds even more remarkable to me. So, you know, you say Grand Knight champion twice. Tell us a little bit about what it takes to attain that title. How do you become a Grand Knight champion? And then how do you do it, become a two-time Grand Knight champion? Well... It used to be once you completed your Grand Knight title, uh, that's as far as you could take a dog, other than if you won the uh, uh, you know, National Grand at Autumn Oaks or the world title, uh, that was the only way. But as we started evolving into the TOC uh, and some of them kind of things, it used to be you hunted Autumn Oaks, you hunted the world, and then there was really nowhere else to take your Grand Knight and hunt them at because you know, it, it was really no reason to hunt them at a, a local hunt because you already had your Grand Knight title. You know, you start out as a registered dog, achieve five cast wins, get into the night champion to keep, uh, achieve eight cast wins and, and so forth on like that. So in, when, you, when you do, when you become a grand knight, when you, we started hunting to get these qualified, to get qualified for the TOC, you started racking up cast wins to get qualified for that. And that's when the, the title come about to where you could achieve your grand knight title more than once, you know, twice or three times. And that's simply going out and duplicating what you did in the night champion uh, registry, uh, just doing it again. Sure. And, you know, the thing about that is a lot of people would look at that way. You know, you change the rules, expand it where you can get multiple grand knight champions because we want more dogs running. Actually, that's not the case. You mentioned the local events. You have no incentive to go to those local events. And we've heard, you know, these guys, I mean, Cody just said that works kept him from hunting the way that he would like to. But then we heard Jason Himes saying that he had hunted every single day because right. most of these guys to get to this level and to stay there, you know, you're going to have to be out in the field every single day. And it's just not as easy to motivate, to get yourself out there to do the work that you need to do when there's no other reward for it. So Exactly. And now they're rewarded. And, and I heard today earlier, um, and I don't have the statistics, but I know there was dogs here this weekend, uh, I believe had the upwards of, you know, somewhere between 12 and 15, maybe even more cast wins this year alone, or this past year alone to get to here. So uh, it's just another title that they're able to achieve. Uh, and, uh, you know, not that it makes a, you know, like the, the, like the title makes it that much more impressive. W what it shows is the consistency in a hound. You know what I mean? Because them, them cast wins are won predominantly by plus points. And, uh, you know, it just shows that the dog is consistent over time. Sure. 
You sure. Know? You know, and that's one of the things, if you're looking, no matter the game that you play, one of the things I love about the United Kennel Club is we have such a variety out there. Of course, I'm a retriever guy, and I've been running the retriever games for years, and recently the United Kennel Club embraced the Super Retriever Series. That became, you know, a, a, an official sanctioned event under the UKC. Of course, everybody knows about the Coonhound events. It's a big, big deal. The Purple Ribbon Breeding Program has been huge um, over the years, but, you know, we've also got, got the Beagle events. Basically, Basically, if it's a type of hunting dog, there's probably a United Kennel Club competition uh, venue available for that dog out there. And I think that's one of the great things about UKC. And another great thing about the United Kennel Club is that, you know, they are continuing to advance it to try to level the playing field to make it where the best dog is, is the one that wins. And if you're looking at purchasing a pup, the thing about, you know, looking at that consistency, I, People ask me all the time as a dog guy, what are you looking for when you look at a pup? And first thing that I tell all of them is, look at the mama and daddy and look at the titles that they've earned. Because that's gonna show you how, you know, where the genetics are. If they're consistent in the field, they're probably gonna more consistently produce. Would you agree with that? Well, I think, um, yeah, I, it, to, a, 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 to a, a great deal on that side of it, I've always felt like, um, natural ability reproduces natural ability. Uh, what does natural ability normally uh, uh, produce? Winners. Yeah. You know, it's just, I mean, that's really the, the simplicity. I mean, it, it sounds simple. It's not. It sounds simple. It's not. But, you know, it, when you have something that naturally uh, is gifted in that field, the chance of that, re that recreating itself is greater. Oh, versus no, no. ones that you have to do a lot of work with, you yeah. know. No. Uh, we've all, we've been around this long enough. You just get that one, and, uh, you know, I've always shared this, and this goes right in line with this. Uh, good dogs make good handlers. Great dogs make great handlers. Amen. I really believe that. And, and you know, I know for me, uh, I thought I knew a lot about hunting and that kind of thing until I owned my first good dog, and he taught me more about the hunts than, than I had been taught up to that point. I realized that it got a lot easier to win them hunts when you was packing a good hound. No doubt about know? it. And, and so, you know, you can, when you follow along on that side of it, obviously you stack the odds in your favor uh, sure. when, when you do that. So. No doubt about it. Well, it looks like I see uh, Alan Gingrich coming up with another scorecard for you, Steve. So that means we've probably got another dog down there with our buddy Rick Stretch. How about it, Rick? All right, we're back with another cast winner, and uh, it's a blue tick male named Thief. And I'm standing here with the owner handler. Tell Sorry. us a little bit about your hunt, man. We had a pretty good hunt. I think we scored on five coons. He was under three of them. He traded with another dog on one coon. He actually, I think he traded it, but I didn't get him trade in on it. Took second tree on that, and then had third or last strike on off of them, and then first tree on the other two. Had Jeremy, what kind of terrain were you guys hunting in tonight? We were on a flat river bottom, just uh, strip woods up. So you the drew river. the flatland card tonight. We, Everybody else had been drawing the hills. They like. said we were going to the hills, but our guide put us on a river bottom that was just it was flat all the way up through there. So you just hunted straight up the river. Yep. Well, I think at the end of the cast they said we was two point one eight from the truck. Two point and ha and nobody to drive you nobody. drive around and pick you up. Well, we thought our guide was going to come pick us up on the side side. We couldn't get a hold of him. So. Uh, sleeping. <laughs> so we got to walk back. Yeah. <clears throat> tell us a little bit about Thief. And first of all, tell us how you named him. What? I really don't know how I come up with the name Thief. I just liked it, and I named him Fancy Country Thief. My female's name was Fancy that I raised him out of, and he's out of Big Country. All right. So you've had him since he was a pup. Yes, sir. All right. Yep. Tell us a little bit about his style. He's. Pretty independent. He's a last strike dog. He doesn't ever, hardly ever get first strike. It's funny because in Conway, I got first and first on two coons to get me in on 450. So you come out of the Conway, in. Arkansas region? Yes, sir. Region. Yes, sir. And uh, one cast win down there? Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. All right. So how old, you, how old is he again? He'll be three next week. Three. Okay. Yes, All right. Well, congratulations on your win, man. Thank you, sir. You got a pretty good check already and, on, and maybe another one coming. Huh? Tickle to death. I hear you. Good luck to you, man. Thanks, sir. There you have Jeremy Smiley with Thief. Tell you what, Steve, uh, looks like Jeremy and Thief definitely stole it, but it wasn't any easy feat looking at that scorecard. This was pretty much uh, a pretty good race in the end. Tell us a little bit about what you see there. 
Well, they scored on five, he, and he got, uh, you know, he got a piece of one and, and, the, and the best part of two others. And, uh, you know, again, a uh, very tough cast uh, that he had in there. Um, obviously, this is another blue tick that advances, so that's our, that's our I think that's the third one, if I, if I got it right. I think it that's is. the third yes, one uh, that's going through. Um, but you know, he, he, you know, dog, dog sat underneath three, three raccoons and had the better part, and had the better part of two of them. And, uh, you know, um, and honestly, uh, one to cast with 425, the closest dog to him at 150. Um, this dog actually comes out of a, you know, uh, one that I'm very familiar with in the, in the big country dog. And, uh, this litter, uh, this dog is no stranger to the winter circle and he comes from, a talking a little bit earlier on our on the reproduction yeah, about thing. the genetics he, big the country genetic, yeah. he's he uh he comes from a whole litter there's there's litter mates of him that are winning big everywhere so it's not surprising to see him hit advance here okay. you know so and, and really like jeremy i'll tell you what very happy you got to congratulate jeremy and thief buddy for moving on and i think we've got a flurry of them coming in so let's don't waste any time taking it back to to rick stretch let's go rick all right, and here we are with uh, Caleb Griffin and owner handler on uh, Preacher Man. Yes, sir. Caleb, congratulations on your win. Tell us a little bit about your hunt tonight. It went really good. I took a first and first right out the gate and had a coon, and then we scored a couple more or circle trees, and he ended up getting a tree on two more coons, and then you got your score on them as well. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. We had a we had a really good cast, really good turnout of guys, and just awesome night. What kind of terrain were you in? We started off in the hills and hollers, and then we fell off into some big river bottoms, and they kind of peeled around on the side there, and just patch woods in between. Number of coons you guys scored on, maybe? Scored on three, treed four. Okay. I had one treed at the end. I didn't have to tree them in on. Coons were really moving good tonight. Yes, sir. They were. And they we were. expected it. They moved early and yeah. everything. It was it was right out the gate. We started getting on tracks and everything yeah. like that. So preachers got a lot of color. Yeah. Where did that come from? Well, I had a good friend of mine around Bamberg, South Carolina, and Holly Hill. His name's Elliot Schuler, and um, he, he and Mark Sandifer they had him when he was a puppy. That's who I got him from when he was five months old, and they named him Preacher because of the old preacher bred dogs, how they right. were high sure. ten and everything. Yep. And so the preacher man just kind of stuck with him, and then bad habit because he's off Sambo and everything. And so he oh, just okay. kind of took back after his dad's name. All right. And you come out of what uh, regional? Uh, Comer, Georgia. I think that was Zone Six. Or, okay. Uh, and what uh, what did you guys do down there? I had a double. I doubled up. Okay. And, um, All right. Had a good, so, really good time, time. What did you do between Comer and here to get to where we're at tonight? You want me to be honest with you? I left. I him. hope you done I a lot never, of training. I never t I got him out a lot. Yeah. He he's he's lazier than any hound I've ever hunted. <laughs> and so the more I. Oh, my dad, I, here we I, are. I, I'm, I'm as honest as they come, and it, he does a lot better whenever I leave him laid up and everything like that. He's not a dog you've got to get hunted up. I mean, he's he's a dead loner. How old are you? He's five. He's five? He's five. He's a dead loner. He likes to be by himself about every time, and um, he can tree, lay up coons, track coons. It don't really matter. He and you've had him the whole time? Had him since he was five months old. He's been an all-natural to me, and he's just been a blessing. You raised any pups out of him? Yes, sir. We got, well, we, we've got a female bred right now and everything like that, so it'll be a, really his first litter on the ground and everything. So, so Caleb, you've got one check. Yes, sir. At 3,500. If, <laughs> if you don't go nowhere else. I'm here to, I'm here to end this you're on here Saturday. You're here to end Saturday. <laughs> no, well, let's, uh, let's hope you yeah, don't hey, get lazy on it. Hey, you and you, Casey, y'all have done a phenomenal job with this. And it's just, you know, it's my third year coming up here. And it's, it's awesome. I love it. So this you've place. qualified every time? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Sir. And uh, what have you hunted up here in years past? Him. And any wins out of that? Negative. <laughs> Negative. We've all, we've all went home early. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, congratulations thank you on so your very much man. yes good sir. luck to you the rest of the weekend yes sir thank you and there you have it preacher man and caleb griffin they're headed into the top 24. awesome thank you very much rick uh with that dog coming in another crossbreed so that's 19 in i believe now we've had six non-walkers so they're definitely going to outpace the field coming in here 79 percent. the percentages are, are are going a little bit different are going are, are starting to tilt a little bit yes sir uh, you know, he scored on two, and uh, that was enough for him to. Uh, and and this is not his first time here. I, I believe this. Um, without going to look at it, what I recall, I believe he was one of the ones that was here in 2021. And uh, you know, this you know, like he, uh, Caleb Sherrod, this is his third time here. I don't know. I don't think he had this. I think he hunted another dog at one time because uh, there's only been two that have made it all three years. But, you know, this is his third time coming here. And, uh, you know, finally the third year was a charm for him. Congratulations, young man. Uh, happy for you. 
you know, obviously this dog being repeatedly being here uh, has, is as capable as any of them that are advancing uh, to get through for sure. Yep, no doubt about it. And we got another one coming up on deck. This will be our 20th, so we'll only have four to go after this. But we got them coming in quick, so let's take it back down. Rick Stretch, tell us who we got here at dog number 20. <laughs> All right, here we are, Maddox Arnett and his hound Libby. What are you thinking, pal? You were on vacation, and somebody else handled her at the region. Yep. And who was that? Jared Miller. And out of Hunting Out of the Grange, I'm assuming. Yep. Okay, all right. So you got home from vacation. I saw that. And uh, so from the regionals to now, how many times has she been hunted? How many times have you hunted her? We've hunted her about every night. About every night. Yep. All right. And she's been looking good. Mm hmm All right. So tell me a little bit about your cast this evening. We had a great cast. Um, I, I struck first, treed first, and she had a coon. Other dogs um, were a split treed. They both had coons. She treed another coon, and I knew it was on from there. And she just uh, treed two more. You guys had a lot of action. I, see, I yeah. got a glance of the scorecard a while ago, and there's a lot of action. I, other dogs treed a couple of coons as well. Yep. So, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about her breeding. She's out of Bushwhacker on her top side and out of your league Libby on the bottom side. All right. And Maddox, you've had her since she's a pup? Yep, six Actually, she's old. in your dad's name. Yep. And, uh, but you're, you're getting most of the credit on this thing. <laughs> yep. So, uh, you won this round here. You got $3,500. So, we got Mike, Mike involved, your dad. We got you involved. We got the handler from the regional. That's yep. going to be a pretty small split. Yep. Well, I'm assuming we want to get a little bit higher to where everybody gets a little more yep. chump of the change here. Yeah, I had, a, I had a great judge, by the way, too, and he told me to tell you that it was no help from you. Oh, <laughs> and that was who? <laughs> Cody Sype. Oh, Cody, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you guys were in a good spot. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So um, what's the plan now? Win it all. Win it all. Go big or go home. How old are you, Maddie? 14. 14. Yep. And you've been hunting since... I've you can go. Walk. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You come from a strong group up there, man. <laughs> Dual Murphy, Jeff Cole, um, that bunch up there. They... I taught them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, congratulations Thank on you. your win, man. Thank you. So it's uh, the deal is we go on vacation, get somebody else to hunt our dog for us, and now we're in the spotlight. <laughs> yep. We'll bring you the next one here in just a second. Awesome job, Maddox. I know Mark, I know Mike is very, very happy. And I'll tell you what, another young man I love seeing down there. I've got a chance to talk to Maddox before also. And he and Libby, that was a dog that we'd all picked, by the way. All three of yeah. us had picked that dog. And he came out and did a really good job. Let's break down the scorecard, Steve. Well, like you said, like you shared, you know, I, I think he, she sat on her four, but he only need three, uh, scored on three. Um, and another dog uh, scored on one and another dog uh, scored on one and then pulled some minus. So, uh, you know, this little female, um, I'm very familiar with her. Uh, never really personally hunted with her, but been kind of following along on her and Maddox. And hey, huge shout out to him, 14 years old, uh, I believe is what he is now. I think he was 12, uh, two yep, years two ago years when ago he came, yeah. uh, when, when we met him down yeah, here. Yeah, I'll tell you, you and, and, you and Rick are both masterful math, mathematicians. 12 I, plus 2 does yeah, equal 14. It, it does, <laughs> does, equal, does equal 14. He, he dug on Rick on that earlier, too. Yeah. So, but anyways, uh, you know, I know they went on a cruise or uh, following along on that and uh, had, a, had a pretty good friend of mine hunt the dog. And uh, obviously got her punched to the zones with, a, with intent that they would hunt her here. And uh, now he's in the top 24. So uh, huge congratulations. Uh, I know them guys hunt. Uh, and they hunt around a, a, a tough bunch of characters up here in a good way because what it does for them is uh, it's a good way to keep their dogs ready for this particular event. And this little female, uh, you know, uh, what's really awesome about this, so, the, uh, the, so there was a female tonight we talked about earlier uh, by the name of Libby uh, that had three pups off of three different male dogs uh, at this event, which is a pretty incredible feat in itself. The drinking bone dog has won his cast now. Uh, and now this Libby female has won her cast. So that's two out of the three that are in the top 24 out of this one female. Yeah, that's pretty amazing And, uh, and uh, you know, so uh, Leland, no pressure on you. Uh, your cast is not back in yet, but uh, you're the one that started all this. So uh, they've done their part. Now we're going to see what you do. 
Yes, sir. And we hope Leland does I'm well just, tonight. I'm just yeah. picking on him. Yeah, yeah absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Well, congratulations again, Maddox. And we got another one. So, Rick, tell us who we got on deck right now. All right. So we're back here with another cast winner. It's Insane Copper and Robert Church. He's the owner handler of this dog. Robert, tell us a little bit about your cast tonight. Oh, uh, we had a good cat hunt and a good cast, guys. Uh, I had a, you know, struck hundred and a. 125 right out of the truck and uh, coon scene i assume yep coon was seen uh another guy's dog got treed uh we walked it and we, it was a circle tree and then uh we apollo got treed way through the country so we walked to him and i was like my dog was going the other way so i was like ah this might not be good right and i uh, got over there we got apollo scored he had a coon and uh walked back to another guy's tree because it got treed and uh so at this point you're still winning yep but you don't know where your dog is at or haven't heard it right so we got back to where the other guy's dog was treed at and uh i was able to hear mine after we got his tree scored and he was uh treed through the country again and you yep. called him treed and went yep. and scored him yep. and struck and treed him had a another hundred strike in a 125 tree and so had the king i set i mean at 450 plus and i think the other guys were like the 175 okay so then we had to call a timeout and uh, gather up dogs because they was just kind of getting scattered everywhere. And uh, how much time did you have left when you called timeout? Twenty-seven minutes. Okay, You're, well, you got me nervous. You're yeah, nervous up here. I, I was nervous. Yes. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> well, we turned cut loose, and uh, I had last strike on that deal. I think I was because uh, one guy withdrew, so I took fifty, 50 strike. Yeah. Uh, he went down over the hill and got treated again. So I kind of sat there a little bit and finally called him treed. And, well, we was walking to him, got real close to him, and the two got him. So I'm like, wow. Well, in the meantime, Apollo gets treed up over the hill, so he has another coon. So that really crunched us, you know, got us real close got together. Got you close together, yeah. Yep. Then he got treated again, so I retreated Same him. area? Same area. Okay. I think he moved down just a little bit. And uh, he pulled me out and had another coon. So. And that was the end of your hunt? That was the end of the hunt. You guys scored on what, five, six, six coons? Four, five, six, six coons. coons. Yeah. yeah. Um, you come out of what region? Uh, down around La Plata, Missouri. Okay. Region, what, one? I think. I don't know the yeah. number for sure, but yeah, La Plata had it. And uh, one cast win or two cast wins? I had one cast win. I had a uh, high scoring dog Friday night. And then you re entered on Saturday, Saturday and Saturday just coasted just along? Or? Coasted through. Okay. Yep. All right, very good. Tell us a little bit about his bloodline. Uh, he goes back to uh, Jeff Long's uh, Think Blank Domino female out of uh, Southwest Missouri, and uh, sh she's a direct litter mate to uh, Insane Frosted Train. And then uh, his dad is uh, Truman Lake Roscoe. Oh, okay, uh, yep. Steve, Steve Mackey. Mackey. Yeah, yep. yeah, that's an so, old name. Yeah, yeah. So you made it this far. You've got a pretty good size check right now. If you don't go any farther, yep. but the plan is to do what? I keep keep going forward. Keep rolling. Yep. Keep rolling. What did you do from the regional to here to get to where we're at tonight? Oh, I just took him out and uh, hunted him, you know, about an hour each night. Hunting several yeah. nights then? Yeah, several nights. All right. Uh, getting up work next morning, you know, pretty early, so. What do you do? I work at Prime uh, Trucking. Okay. Work okay. on refrigeration units. Okay. Yep. All right. So. Man, congratulations to you. Thank you. You're one step closer. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. There's another one of our winners for you. All right. Thank you very much, Rick. So that makes 21 that we've got in. Only three casts remain. And while we're waiting on those, Steve, recap the scorecard for us right quick. Well, I tell you, you could hear it in this young man's voice. Uh, He's, ex he's a little nervous, but he's excited. Um, and, uh, you know, looking at the card, uh, I know the feeling when you're in a cast. You, you kind of got it won. Uh, you're trying to play defense, but you know you need to play offense. And uh, I can only imagine what was going through him uh, when, he, when he trees, pulls, uh, pulls the minus and really kind of puts him, uh, according to the card, puts him now losing. 
And, uh, you know, I've always said sometimes, uh, sometimes you need to pull the dog out and sometimes the dog needs to pull you out. Obviously, the dog probably shouldn't have done what he did that put him in that situation, but the dog recovered from it. And, uh, again, this is another one of them, I guess, dark horses. I mean, he obviously got in with a really good score, one-night score in, uh, in Missouri. The dog is capable of putting up points. Cast winner there. Uh, cast winner there, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, it's what, it's what keeps me coming back uh, to this in, in what I've, we've had so much fun over the years and to see this young man be a little excited, uh, be a little nervous, but be a little excited. I can imagine that him and Maddox and, you know, we've had, we've had different, uh, young men get through, young handlers get through. There's, they're going to try to sleep tonight, but it's going to be a little it's gonna tough. Be tough. It's going to be tough. And, uh, they'll be tossing and turning. They'll be a war out at the end of the weekend, regardless of how far they finish or maybe even win this thing. So, uh, congratulations, uh, uh, congratulations, Robert. Uh, you know, it's, it's awesome uh, that you've made it this far, and uh, we look forward to seeing what you can do the rest of the weekend. Yes, sir. Well, I'll tell you, Steve, it looks like we've had another one in Van Zone, so we're not going to waste any time here. Uh, we're getting really, really close to the end, as a matter of fact. As I said a second ago, we've only got th actually two casts out. We know that we've had uh, another one come in. I believe this will be our 22nd cast of the evening to come in. We're about to get the scorecard on that in just a second. I got a little bit ahead of myself just then. They just got in, so we got to give them just a second to get uh, on, on deck here. Um, you know, you guys that are watching tonight with our Midnight Mayhem, thank you so much for being part of this as we bring in the top 24. I also want to remind everybody out there that we're going to be back Saturday night for, I guess, the semifinals and the finals. So we'll start out at 8.30 Eastern time. We'll be coming back to you again from our beautiful venue here in Greencastle, Indiana, Three Fat Labs at 8.30 Eastern time. We're gonna have some special guests along with us that night. Of course, we're gonna have my friend Lynn Carradine from Yukonuba. She's always got a lot to say about canine nutrition. And also, uh, if you missed it earlier, we've got a new program, or uh, part of the program, um, Coonhound 101 with Jamie Estep, where Jamie's going to break it down. And this isn't just something that we're doing here at the TOC. This is a series that you'll be able to follow across uh, the UKC Hunting Ops platforms. As Jamie breaks down coon hunting basically for the, for the novice, for guys like me that want to learn more about it. I'm really anxious to, to tune in and check out Coonhound 101, and we're going to introduce it to you Saturday night when we come back here uh, at our broadcast. We also want to encourage everybody, please follow us on social media. You can catch us. There you go. You can see it right there on your screen, all the links, Facebook and Instagram at UKC Hunting Ops. Of course, youtube.com slash UKC Dogs. And be sure when you do post on social media, be sure and throw our hashtag in there, hashtag dogs that do more, because that's truly what we've got here at the United Kennel Club. These guys... Uh, very competitive dogs. Uh, our podcast, of course, is available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. UKC Hunting Ops podcast. A lot of in interesting information there. And I'll tell you what, you don't have to be a coonhound person. I mean, a lot of ground is covered. I love the podcast. I was listening on the way up here. Uh, looks like we've got another team you may hear in the background coming in. But the UKC Hunting Ops podcast always entertaining and just like everything else that the United Kennel Clubs does, extremely well produced. Makes me proud uh, and Steve too, I think I could speak for him and Rick to say we're all very excited to be part of it. You know, the United Kennel Club has done a lot to elevate the sport and constantly the thing that really makes me happy about it is, is to, uh, I'm a guy that's for the dog. You're a guy that's for the dog. We're dog people to see an organization that is trying to mold everything that it does around finding the best dog in the field and giving everybody a level playing field and the best opportunity to win. I think we got to put our hats off to UKC guys like Alan Gingrich here who worked so hard to uh, bring really top notch events. Quarter million dollar purse, I believe, is that right? Quarter million dollars on the line here this weekend. Yep. Break that down for us a little bit, Steve. I know thirty-five hundred dollars for every cast winner tonight. Is that correct? That that is correct. So everybody that advances here is going to get thirty-five hundred, and uh, and then they'll hunt tomorrow night. Uh, there'll be twenty-four dogs that advance. Uh, there'll be six cast winners that come out of that, 
And, uh, Do you what, know what that's worth tomorrow night if you win your cast? Uh, well, when they get into tomorrow night's round, uh, what that's going to do is create six cast winners. And out of them six cast winners, uh, they, will go, they will now hunt on Saturday night early in three two-dog uh, two heads-up cast winners. The three losers of that, uh, is they're, they're going to get 5000 apiece, wow. if, if, I, if I'm correct on that. And uh, so, so getting through tonight puts you in a position, your next step is the worst you can do is 5000 if you win. Uh, I can tell you the heads up round cast is a tough cast to win, but then that puts you in the final cast yeah. where it's 50, 30, and 20. 50,000 for first, 30,000 for second, 20,000 for third. And, you know, to your point and Sharon, um, you know, on trying to create formats and, and keep trying to improve, uh, United Kennel Club and, and the staff there uh, have done an incredible job on you know a lot we've had a lot of changes you know we it, the, this format changed even a little bit from last year and it was very well received and, and it's all about rewarding the dogs that work extremely hard to get here and then it, and then it, to get them to advance and so i think it's uh i think that part of it is a huge testament to to uh their desire they you know they listen to the hunters. What what do the hunters want? Yeah. And uh, it's really created a it's really created uh, an, an awesome uh, an, an awesome environment, environment yeah. to compete in yeah. that anybody can compete in. You know, we, we, in today's age that we live in, uh, in, in a we, you know in a in a land of opportunity, I guess you could say, there's a lot of hunts that you can compete in. Uh, and, and win a, a lot of money and win some pretty uh, achievable, you know, win some pretty awesome titles. Uh, but this is the only hunt in the country that I truly believe uh, that anyone that has a good dog and has a little bit of and has a little bit of desire, you can honestly come here and have a chance a chance really a legitimate chance on winning this title yeah. and and we see it year after year uh jay paul of of where somebody comes here that maybe you know this is their first really big hunt they've been able to hunt away from town uh out of their home hometown sure because it's affordable i mean you go out and get five cast wins and then and then your next step is to come here and i think it's 150 dollars uh, you can go hunt the zone level in advance to here, so it gives an opportunity for anybody to come, and that's to what's play awesome for about a it. Great, great purse, and I'll tell you, the level of excitement here is just amazing to me every year when I come. I love seeing these guys come in. And speaking of coming in, we, it looks like boom, boom, boom. Our final three have come in, so we're about to wrap it up. But uh, we got three more dogs to go. I think we've got one on deck. So uh, let's get ready. Let's turn it over to our buddy Rick Stretch. Here I am with uh, country music legend, Orzo Miller. Orzo, congratulations on your win tonight. Thank you, Rick. Tell us a little bit about your hunt and how it went. Well, it was a fairly simple hunt. Uh, we only treed two coons. Dogs kind of scattered about. I got the biggest part of one and it held up. Had some pretty good dog work. We just had a few den trees, couldn't get them on the outside. But uh, other than that, we had a real good hunt. What kind of train you have? We had, uh, well, it was hard on a fat kid. I could tell you that. It was straight up and down. I remember when you wasn't like this. I, well, you're right. and uh, But uh, it was, uh, it was I, when, as a matter of fact, about 10 yards in the timber, I said, this might be the prettiest place I've ever seen. And in about another 10 foot, the world fell out from under us. So, I mean, I it was you. straight down. So How many coons you got scored? Well, on? we scored on two. Okay. Two. Uh, another little jip done a good job, split off over there and had... Uh, 175 on hers, and I had 200 on mine. So yeah. uh, I was split about three quarters through the country, and then the, then it, then things then things started happening. We got split about and done a lot of walking. Ends so and circles. And absolutely. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Yep. Tell us a little bit about your dog. What's going on? Well, here? it's uh, kind of a long story. We owned his dad. Got about 30 seconds. Okay. No, well, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> we owned his dad, and he uh, he was that fr he was the first and only bout of blasto I've ever seen in my life. Heard about it on some right. dogs, and uh, he got it. And I wouldn't wish that on anybody or any dog. Uh, I did have him bred before uh, that, and uh, this 
the female lay down, had 10 pups and killed eight of them in about two days. And I got him and a female in the house at, at two days old and bottle fed them like little babies. And I ended up the female, I believe, is in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I'm not much on female hounds. And I kept old Hank here. And he, uh, I won his first uh, $200 at seven months old at the baby stake. Wow. And I thought I was going to win the whole thing. A little female ended up beating me. And then... Uh, but he's been a uh, all, uh, maybe I don't know what a coon dog is, but he's probably the third best dog I've ever owned in my life. Yeah. And I've been hunting since I was a youngster, so. So you got through which region? Uh, La Plata. La Plata. La Plata. And um, what'd you do out there? Did you win one round, two rounds? Uh, I won do? one round. Uh, the, the Friday night, we treed eight coons. Wow. And I didn't get enough of them. <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> Friday night we treed seven and I got the biggest you part of it. Yeah, yeah. Saturday night it was going to work a yeah, little different. Yeah, that's for right. You. So, uh, what uh, you know, and I'm wanting to give credit where credit's due. And uh, my buddy Scott, that was with me, he was uh, the 16th. I was the 16th dog. He was the 17th. And my other friend Aaron Lorton with Old Stroke was the 18th dog. And was all three of us from Illinois, and all three of us. All three of those dogs, Kevin Primer had a little hand in them. Oh, wow. Yes, sir. So we I'll give credit. Kevin. We all know Kevin. Yeah. So I think the stroke dog and this dog, I know for a fact they started in the pen, and then I think Scott bought yeah. his Mac dog off of Kevin's Kevin. got a coon pen down there. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes. So uh, I, I give a little credit where credit's due. He started old Hank here. Sure. So. But, uh, you know, I had to put the finishing touches on sure him, obviously. So. Yeah. But, yeah, so... I wish we had more time. We'd get you a guitar and then let well, you sing I, a little bit I, for us. But, well, uh, I, I'm more we're all out of time. Yeah, I'm more They're comfortable with that. Now. Yeah. Congratulations on your Thank win, you, Orzo. It's good seeing you, yeah, man. That's good seeing you. So there you have it, Orzo Miller and Hank. And uh, Hank's three-legged right now. Orzo's got to get him out there and get a little vet medicine in him. And uh, No, we're going to keep him like that and slow him down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, there you have it. We've got another one in the wings waiting on us. <laughs> Tell you what, I always enjoy Orzo, man. That guy, I hope we get he sticks around because I'd like to get Orzo up here. Uh, I, I got a buddy that's also a big old boy, and, and uh, he says, man, I love hunting a lame dog. Ain't it hard for a fat boy to follow? So <laughs> uh, Orzo always has fun, though. I tell you, had a, another really strong uh, cast there. Break down the scorecard for us. Tell us a little bit about it. Well... You know, Orzo, uh, uh, he beat my, uh, he, 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 uh, he, he won a cast on uh, a dog that I had kind of picked to go far in this. Uh, Leland with the two-track dog uh, was in this cast. Really good hound. Now, was uh, that and, a Libby dog? Yeah, it's a Libby female. That's the third one. Yeah, yeah, that was the third one. And then he had Hillbilly PBR in the cast, which is another uh, very good dog. But I knew that, I knew in talking to Orzo uh, today, uh, uh, we, uh, Years ago, I got to do uh, quite a bit of pleasure hunting with Orzo. Uh, you will not find any more colorful individual to hunt with than Orzo Miller. And if you ever get the opportunity to go hunt with him, you'll, you'll understand uh, that statement. Uh, he hunts hard. Uh, he knows how to get one ready. And he told me out on the deck today that uh, he felt like he had as good of a shot as anyone here. And, uh, you know, they scored on two coons. He was struck a quarter higher. And, but here's the deal. He was able to hold on to that throughout the hunt and that's what it takes yeah. you know you, you got to have a good hound uh get into that plus column and then hang on to it and yeah, uh, hung in there to win yeah and uh you know uh, i wouldn't shock me at all uh, to see him make a big run at this and i can guarantee you it'll be a lot of fun to watch well if sure. it does make it a lot deeper we're definitely gonna gonna have him back on with us and speaking of back on it looks like we've got another dog back up on deck so for the next last time we're going to take it over to our colleague rick stretch so we've got another one here, and, and once again, we've got another blue tick up here. And uh, Aaron and I were just talking about this. We're thinking four out of seven cast winners in the blue tick hounds tonight, and that, that's an awesome feat by them. So I'm here with Aaron Layman's and his hound dream. Aaron, tell us a little bit about your cast tonight. Well, it, uh, it started out pretty rough, to be honest. We, uh, everybody was, nobody was impressed with their dogs for the first 35 minutes, and uh, we come out of the hole. Come out of the hole pretty quick. Treat two coons at the end, and we redeemed ourselves. So, what kind of terrain were you guys in? Um, 
The uh, first drop was pretty nice. We moved to a new stop, the drop, the second drop, and uh, we got into some hills. Got yeah. into some hills. And we, but you we, got into the coons as well. The coons were in the hills, so that was a, that was a plus. It was worth the climb. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know you guys had mountains in Indiana, uh, but I saw, I saw. They've got them here. Tell us about uh, the regional that you come from. Which one did we you? We uh, hunted out of La Plata. Okay, and uh, one cast win, two cast two, wins? Two cast wins. He was uh, one of the six double cast winners at La Plata. Okay, what kind of scores? you remember any? We, uh, we had 150 on both nights. We, okay. We, we scored one coon each night, and he was, he was the only dog underneath the coon both nights. Wow. Okay, tell us a little bit about what you've done from the regional to, to now, and why we're standing here. We just continued, just continued doing a little bit of work. Um, he's 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 been dialed in for a couple of years now. We just we just keep him exercised and keep our fingers crossed. How old is he? Um, he'll be four the end of May. And his bloodline. Uh, he's directly off of Bocephus and uh, Uchman female. I got him as a puppy from Mr. Phil Vogel. Okay. All right. Uh, you've got a nice size check right now. What are you thinking? What What's going on now? Are we, are we shooting for the moon here? What are we doing? I think, you know, we might have to add a thermal to our uh, to our realm of tools. I heard that. I heard that. Congratulations for your win. We appreciate it. And there you have it. Another blue tick hound with a cast win tonight. Uh, four of seven of them that we uh, think's happened here. That's awesome. And I just did a little bit of a statistic check in myself. I know you're our statistician, Steve, but uh, Rick was dead on the money there. We, we've so far with one cast left to come in. I, I spoke, I misspoke a second ago. I also said that we had our final three, boom, boom, boom. Actually, our final cast at that point was five minutes out. So they should be here at any second now. So before we wrap it up, I wanted to take a look at the numbers. And looking at the numbers, it looks like so far we've got uh, qualifiers going to the top 24 out of 11 different states right now. It appears that Kentucky's dominating with, I believe, five cast winners. Also, out of the 23 cast winners that we've had uh, so far, of those, seven of them have not been uh, train walkers, and four of them have been blue ticks. As a matter of fact, we've had four blue ticks, one English, and two crossbreeds. Does that surprise you at all, Steve? Not really. Um, I, we've seen it happen before uh, at these hunts. Um, you know, it's, uh, you, you just never know. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you can come here, and uh, when you get to this point, you can kind of throw that out. Uh, you know, to that point, too, on uh, something else that uh, when you was talking about that, uh, I tell you, man, you got to give a huge shout out to the La Plata, Missouri zone uh, in counting here. I think they got one, two, three, four, five. They got seven dogs, uh, seven dogs out of 18 that are so far that have advanced out of that zone. Yeah. Or out of that the, region. And you three know, handlers so, have come from Missouri also. Yeah, so, been. you know, I mean, uh, seven out of 18 uh, advancing to the top 24, uh, pretty strong showing. Pretty strong showing for that for that region, and and it really doesn't surprise me. I tell you what, that's a that's a that's a tough that's a there's a lot of there's a lot of good dogs and a lot of good handlers from up there, and uh, you know on the dream dog uh, again, here's a dog uh, that got himself in a hole, and you heard what he said. He you know he was he his dog come back and rebounded, treat a couple of coons, uh, something that the other ones in his cast didn't, and uh, you know this dog is off of Bo Cephas. Uh, doesn't surprise me. Bo Cephas is through a bunch of really good dogs. Uh, obviously, that was what country was out of, and one of the other dogs is a grandson out of that. And and so there's a lot of you know there's a lot of uh, uh, you know these dogs are good enough to win this thing. Amen. And speaking so. of winning, uh, the final cast to come in happens to be cast number one of all things is number 24 to come in tonight but i see mr alan gingrich a master of hounds coming up here uh, it looks like is that a scorecard i see in his hand there steve yes it is awesome so we're about to find out who our 24th dog is to advance and i'll tell you for you guys that have been watching tonight i want to thank you for tuning in to midnight mayhem here part of the 2023 united kennel club tournament of champions you know this has become kind of an annual thing that that we've been doing and really enjoy seeing these dogs the opportunity to get to talk to a bunch of the handlers and to give them a moment to shine because these guys you know, unfortunately you know not all of them are going to move on and I tell you what, I know from as a competitor in dog events myself, it takes a lot to get here. 
It's great that we've got the opportunity to recognize all these people that survived, dog and handler teams that survived the first round. And, you know, it takes so much work and it's our opportunity to give them just a little bit of recognition there. To put that in perspective, we touched base on a little bit earlier tonight. There was 1,333 dogs that got qualified for this event. I can promise you there's 1,308 dogs that would trade spots with M24. There are 1,309, okay, I missed my mark by one, that would trade spots with M24. You know, there's a lot of good dogs that got beat on the regional level, it just happens. You have 800 dogs that get there and only 96 move on. And tonight, uh, as we've seen, uh, big time winners, uh, dogs that are very consistent, good handlers, dogs that was in, in position to win this hunt, you know, there was 96 or 93 that got confirmed that was here. There's 24 that advanced to tomorrow night. So there's a lot of good dogs going home tonight too. No and a lot of good it. dogs that are staying. And we've got one more, so we're not gonna hold up anymore. Alan, bring us over that scorecard and let's take it back down to Rig Stretch and find out who our 24th qualifier is here at Midnight Mayhem. And here we are with our last cast winner tonight, Jacob Bingham uh, with Overdrive and uh, Jack's back in here with us. They've entered two hounds this weekend and they've won with both of them tonight. Uh, Jacob, tell us a little bit about uh, your hunt this evening. Uh, we started out real slow. Uh, got a couple dogs treed in there. Got them turned back loose. Mine got treed again. Had another coon and we walked back to the last dog. If she had a coon, he, she won and she ended up having a den and mine was through the country treed again after the hunt. And no doubt had one. Yeah. So you guys made just a handful of trees then throughout the we, night? Or? We scored on six coon and probably oh, wow. seen 10 or 12 more wow. setting up. What kind of terrain? Uh, pretty hilly. Pretty <laughs> Bunch I think of four-wheeler trails through it, but it was pretty hilly. Yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about your dog. Uh, he's out of uh, overdrive, obviously, and then he's out of a female called Bella, out of Trader. Uh He's going to be seven here in a couple of days. He's getting old. It's probably going to be one of his last big hunts. And then I got a pup out of him. I'm going to start hunting. So I'm assuming you come out of the little Plata yep. Uh, yep. regional? Yep. What did you do out there? Uh, I had 550 the first night and got hurt the first night. And the second night, he just looked terrible. Okay. Got lucky and got in on one win. You got hurt or the dog got hurt? The dog did. Okay. So from the regional to here, what have you done to, to make it this far? He sat in the kennel. I ain't done nothing with him. I took him hunting. I never enjoy hearing that. <laughs> I took him hunting uh, sat Sunday night for a little bit. My in-laws were in town. So I took him hunting then, and he looked all right. But he just Did laid up all. Did go with you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. He, didn't, he looked all right. But other than that, he's just been laying in the kennel. He's old enough now. He knows what he needs to do, and I cut him loose. Yeah. So um, you got one round under your belt. Yeah. Looking for more. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Jack, is uh, everything that uh, Jacob said here, is that pretty much the truth? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He does rode him, too, with the, with his his STX. Okay. He keeps him in shape. All right. Well, congratulations. You guys have showed him how to do it, at least. And there you have it, our last cash winner of the night, Overdrive, Jacob Bingham, uh, co-owned with uh, Nick Snodgrass. And uh, good luck to you the rest of the weekend, fellas. All right. Thank you. Guys showing him how to do it. Come on, buddy. Come on. All right, folks, so there you have it. We've got here at our Midnight Mayhem our 24 teams out of 96 that are going to advance to the next round. We've got a lot more action. We're going to be coming to you back Saturday night at 8.30. I'm going to be joined once again uh, by our expert analyst and commentator, Steve Burkholder, and also Mr. Rick Stretch. We'll be starting at 8.30 Eastern Time. Once again, back here from Three Fat Labs in Greencastle, Indiana. A uh, couple of statistics as we wrap up, we were just talking about, looks like out of the 24 dogs that advanced, uh, we have 17 treeing walkers, one English, two cross breeds, and four blue ticks. And we have handlers with our last young man hailing out of Nebraska from 12 different states. So really good representation. We've seen a great field of dogs advance and really hope you guys will come back and join us again on Saturday night. 
Mind you, 8.30 Eastern time, back on our live stream. We're going to take you all the way to the end Saturday night. We're going to have some great guests. Until then, be sure and continue to follow us on social media. And thanks for coming along for the ride tonight. We hope you enjoyed this installment of the 2023 United Kennel Club Tournament of Champions Midnight Mayhem. I'm Jay Paul for Steve and Rick. We'll see you guys on Saturday night. The United Kennel Club's Tournament of Champions is brought to you by our official performance dog nutrition partner, Yukonuba. Fuel up, train hard, get after it. And by our official GPS collar partner, Dogtra. Make every dog exceptional. They're partners, ready to do whatever it takes. Athletes that pound for pound can outrun, outwork, and outperform anybody you're watching on Sunday. No contract required. You don't waste that kind of potential. You train it, fuel it, unleash it. You feed nutrition that holds nothing back. The Yukonuba Premium Performance Lineup. You've waited all year, and now it's time. The largest event purse in United Kennel Club history. The field is whittled down from over 1,300 qualifiers. 96 of the best advance to the finals and take their shot at the $250,000 total purse. It's the United Kennel Club's Tournament of Champions. Who will go home with $50,000? Let's make history. It's time. Are you ready? <laughs>